Hello and welcome to this evening's meeting of Planning and Development Management Committee. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Aidan Williams and I serve as the committee chair of the committee. Also present on the call, uh, the committee vice chair, Councillor Ben Hartley, officers from the council's planning service, the council's legal and democratic services, the local highway authority, as well as the elected councillors who make up the, member, the voting members of the committee. Um, before we continue, I should advise for everyone's information that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded. So please mute your microphones to minimize background noise. If you wish to speak on an item, please use the chat facility to notify me and then wait until you're invited to speak. Um, turning to the agenda now, um, attendances have been we have received apologies from Simon Thomas and Barry Wynne Stanley. Um, substitute members serving on the committee tonight are Councillor Akila Rakanola and Councillor David Acton. Um, thank you for so doing. Um, agenda item two, declarations of interest. Are there any members who need to make a declaration? Yeah, um, when we get to 83 White Lake Avenue, um, I've had no involvement with this application or the applicant or residents um, about this application but the property actually um, is puts onto my property is, is, is sideways onto my property so I'm very close to it so I think under those circumstances you could argue I've got a personal interest so when we get to that item um, I won't take part in the discussion or vote. Thank you councillor. Um, Ms Coley, you've indicated in the chat that you'd like to make a declaration. Yes, thank, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'd like to declare an interest in the application at Manny Halal Meat and Vegetable Shop at Moss Lane in Hale, please. Uh, I reside in the vicinity. I'd just like to confirm I've, I've had no involvement in the preparation of that, the report in front of members this evening, and I will step out of the meeting at the appropriate time as well. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Um, I should myself also make a declaration of interest. Um, and the two of the items, um, the developments in Partington, um, I, I work for the registered provider of social housing that uh, potentially um, may be working with the applicant. So I, I will not be participating in those items and uh, Councillor Hartley will assume the chair. Um, can't see any other... Oh, Councillor Rigby? Yes, um, I declare an interest in the two Partington applications. Um, I was chairman of governors of three of the schools. Um, I'm now chairman of members, but I, I will be taking part. I have no other interest. Um. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, um, moving forward, agenda item three minutes. Um, they've been circulated. Um, are there any members happy to propose and second them? Happy to um, second propose whatever. Wonderful. And Councillor Proctor is. Yep. Great. Thank you. We'll take them as passed. Um, agenda item four questions from members of the public. None have been received. Um, so we shall proceed to the additional information report, which uh, Ms. Cody has circulated to members earlier today. Um, agenda item six, which is a, a report on developer contributions towards the Carrington Relief Road. I believe, Ms. Coley, are you? Um, just providing a short introduction to this thing. Uh, yes, yes, Chair, if you just bear with me while I share my screen, uh, this, this will be um, brief. Okay. Are members able to see that? Yeah, great, okay. Um, th this is a short report, which just uh, is just provides an update really to a previous report, which came before members at the, at the planning committee meeting at the 15th of October and was approved um, in relation to um, using section 106 and SIL monies to fund the Carrington Relief Road uh, and that methodology. Uh, members will need to note and approve the content of the report this evening. There will be a vote in the same way as there was for the previous report. Um, however, the principles and methodology for ca calculating the contributions from that October report are unchanged. All this report does is simply correct an error in the calculation underpinning the formula, and I'll just show you which one, where that is. So that's the methodology for calculating the contributions, and highlighted in red is the cost of the infrastructure. Um, that's, where the, that's where the error arose in the, in the previous report. 
Um, so the body of the previous report made reference to a funding gap of £12 million for the Carrington Relief Road, for which Section 106 contributions were, were to be sought, uh, which we didn't uh, couldn't be covered by other means. That's being the cost of the infrastructure. Now, that could obviously go up and uh, up or down in different circumstances if you were to apply this to, to something else. Um, however, the calculations lying behind the both the um, calculations in the table in the previous report and in the um, uh, and in the works example had used ten million pounds as that figure uh, erroneously. Um, so all this report does is correct that figure uh, to use the twelve million pounds and therefore sets out a new set of calculation uh, sorry contributions per hundred square meters or residential units. And this revised calculation will be used um, to seek co contributions effect with immediate effect is actually the basis of the calculation of the agreed contribution for the Hall Lane Partington application, which is to be considered elsewhere on, on this agenda. Um, thank you. That's all I have to say on that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Coley. Um, members will be quite familiar with um, the issue of the County Relief Road now, I think. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has any questions, but the, the item will need to be um, voted on by committee to confirm that it's been received. Um, I'm happy to propose that, that we accept the report. I think I think Councillor Jerome has a question, Chairman. Councillor Jerome. You must remember to unmute. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm afraid I, I do have problems with this report and the increase in cost to this scheme. This scheme will potentially create an access link, which will bring heavy volumes of traffic through Partington and Carrington. This will increase levels of pollution to residents and will increase traffic volumes. There is still no approved route, no consultation and no clear definition of this project. Yet we are agreeing to increase developer contribution to a road project. As far as I know, we, we have no ecological impact study or on pollution levels in an already industrial area, yet alone our, our climate emergency. We will see application after application in Partington and Carrington, where we see no or little developer contribution going to public transport, active travel, ecological mitigation, or local amenity infrastructure like doctors, chemists, schools. I would ask this committee to seriously think about what we are agreeing to here. It, it seems that we're gonna be giving even more money or even more developer contribution to a road scheme. Thanks, Chair. I'm not, Ms. Cooley, can you clarify what we're actually voting on here? Because it sounds a bit as though, um, and I don't want to uh, misrepresent you here, Councillor Jerome, but it does sound a bit as though you're asking us to vote on the very concept of uh, the relief road. I think really the report's essentially for noting, well, for, for recognising. Yes, that's correct, Chairman. Um, the uh, route of the relief road be subject to pu public consultation, uh, would require a planning application uh, and would need to go through all due, due process. And there's obviously other processes that would need to be uh, involved in determining uh, the allocation of SIL monies uh, and that sort of thing through the executive. All committee are being asked to note uh, tonight and the reason it needs a vote is, is just to show that you are noting and, and approving that, is that there was a mistake in the previous report in the, in the appendix the body of the report had the correct figure in it, um, but it does need to be corrected and corrected form uh, formally through this means, but it is no more than that uh, uh, for this particular item. Chairman, I'm happy to second um, the uh, report. Okay. Well, the report has now been moved and seconded. Um, I'll be happy to, does it require a full vote? I'm advised that it does, yes, Chairman. Okay. Um, I'll just move for members as you appear on my own screen. Um, Councillor Big B. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Jerome. I'll be voting against. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Carey. Uh, for the report, please, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair. Uh, in favour of the report, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Minnis. Voting it well, eventually. I didn't, I didn't think this is about whether you can go for or against the report. I thought the report is as it is, and we're voting to acknowledge it. So I'll, I, I also acknowledge it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. 
Uh, Councillor Morgan. For the report, Chair. Thank you. Councillor, Councillor Arcanola. Oh. Thank you. Councillor, Councillor Acton. Be the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor, Councillor Cordingly. Uh, for the recommendation to change the calculation. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dr. Barclay. Accept the recommendation from the report. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Proctor. Uh, for the report, Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, that report has been accepted by the committee. Um, moving forward, agenda item seven is applications for permission to develop. The first applications that are going to be considered this evening are those that I have declared an interest in. Uh, consequently, I, I will now be stepping down from the chair and leaving the meeting, and Councillor Hartley will assume the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, we'll, we'll move on to so the two items in Partington. So, uh, first of all, there's the, uh, there's the land off Hall Lane, and there's also then the, the second one, which is the land adjoining the Manchester Ship Canal. So, first one starts on page 33 of your bundle, and the second one on page 106 of the bundle. And the proposal is that we take both those items together. So they are two separate applications. First one is for um, full planning permission. The second one, I think, uh, is for reserved uh, matters, um, having previously been an outline application. So my suggestion is we'll take both those items together because it's essentially one development that's being uh, proposed. And certainly when I went through the applications, I was noting down you know, the same points for um, for both applications. Um, presumably, um, Ms. Coley, I don't know if you could advise on this, or maybe um, the solicitor on the call could advise, we'd still need to do a vote on each application, I'm assuming, at the end of the, the debate. Yes, that's right. You'd have to take um, separate votes for each of the applications. Okay. Thank you. So we'll have we'll have one presentation. We've got um, two two speakers uh, against the development. So there's one essentially against each application, and then we'll also hear from the uh, agent uh, for the developer. He will speak to both applications. So I'll allow him six minutes to uh, to speak to us, and the two objectors will will have three minutes because they're speaking to an application uh, an application each. Um, so first of all, we'll have a we'll have a presentation on on both applications uh, from Miss Lowe's. Miss Lowe's, if you're on the call. Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'll just share my screen now. Is that visible for everybody? Yes, it is. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, as um, Councillor Hartley has indicated, this presentation will relate to both applications um, in Partington this evening, the land at Hall Lane and the land adjacent to the Manchester Ship Canal. Just bear with me a second. My presentation appears to have gone awry. Sorry, if you just give me a second. Would you like me to have a go at screen sharing it, Sarah, if it's not working for you? It's just loaded up now, so hopefully that's going to work. But yes, if it doesn't come up in a second, that would be really helpful. Thank you, Rebecca. OK. OK, I've got it up now. Sorry about that. OK, hopefully that should be up for everybody now and we can move through the presentation. Apologies for the delay there. 
So the development here relates to um, the two sites that we have before us, the land at Hall Lane and the land adjacent to the Manchester Ship Canal to the north of Lock Lane. And what the development here would see is the provision, um, the redevelopment of the whole site and the provision of 449 residential units. The development would consist of dwellings of two detached, terrace and semi-detached with a maximum height of 2.5 storeys, but the majority of them being a standard two-storey dwelling. The tenure would be a mix of social rent, affordable rent, shared ownership, private rent, market sales. The development would see uh, extensive landscaping across both sites, um, including the planting of 390 trees, the provision of five areas of open space, a neighbourhood equipped area of play, the provision of a green loop, which would include the formation of a pedestrian promenade along the canal side and wider connectivity improvement works of both sites with the wider Partington area. The developments also provide contributions towards the Carrington Relief Road, education provision, highways improvements, and provide 117 affordable housing units with a mix of tenures. These two applications are submitted in conjunction and will be built out as one development is a full planning application for Hall Lane and a reserve matters um, application for the land adjacent to the ship canal to the north of Lock Lane. The Lock Lane site benefits from an outline planning permission for up to 550 residential dwellings and the principle of this development has previously been accepted. What we're considering tonight is a reserve matters application which seeks approvals, approval for the details of scale, layout, appearance and landscaping only. The plan um, on the screen now shows you the extent of the combined sites, the Hall Lane site uh, to the to the southeast of the site, and then the Lock Lane um, continuing in a linear form all the way down um, adjacent to, to, to Lock Lane. Both sites are located within the Partington Regeneration Area and are identified for residential development in the core strategy. So I'll talk specifically about the Hall Lane site now and, and as I say, full planning permission is sought for the redevelopment of this land, which part, part of which was a former caravan park. The site is also protected open space. A total of 151 residential properties are proposed and this will include 77 units as affordable housing, that's 50%. 36 of those are affordable rent, 27 shared ownership and 14 social rented. In addition, there's 15 units as private rental and 59 units for sale on the open market. Additional works at the Hall Lane site include the formation of a new internal road and, and layout with a vehicular access here um, taken from Hall Lane. Um, a new internal road will connect with the wider Lock Lane site and there will be connectivity through um, to both sites. This, the image on your screen is um, a CGI of the development as you would come in from the Hall Lane um, access. Landscape improvements are proposed throughout the site with approximately 100 new trees being planted within the Hall site alone, along with other soft landscaping works and areas of landscaped open space along the southeast of the site. A public right of way, Partington 4, extends through the site and it's proposed to divert this partly through a new formalised landscape strip and partly on a section of the new estate footway. It's also proposed to, to link um, Partington 4 with a further public right of way, Partington 3, and increase um, connectivity there. The next set of slides show um, some of the house types that will be included in the development across both sites. Um, officers have worked with the applicant in an attempt to simplify the standard house types um, of, the, of the developer. And um, however, modern methods of construction are utilized in the build and it was difficult to, to um, develop a fully bespoke scheme. So there's a couple of these on here, which show you um, this one particular is a detached dwelling, um, simplified um, with um, window apertures and um, the front door. Locally, there is an identified need for improvements to and the expansion of local primary schools, which are oversubscribed. The applicant has confirmed that they will contribute the full financial contribution towards off-site education improvements. In addition, the applicant is also committed to the full financial contribution towards the Carrington Relief Road, which is an important piece of infrastructure, which will improve accessibility and sustainability within Partington. 
some harm has been identified by the, from the development and harm has been identified to the non-designated heritage assets of the Manchester Ship Canal and the Caddis Head Viaduct. In addition, there is the loss of open space in which this site um, sits on. However, the loss of open space is supported by DL3 in, the res in respect of the regeneration of Partington. And in this regard, the benefits are considered to outweigh these harms. Those benefits being 151 new, new dwellings, which will significantly contribute towards the identified housing land supply shortage. Approximately 50% of these will be affordable housing. We've secured full developer contributions towards education and the Carrington Relief Road. And the development as a whole will contribute towards the regeneration aims of the Partington project priority regeneration area. Now we move on to the Lock Lane development. As I've stated previously, this site benefits from an outline approval for up to 550 residential units, and that principle has previously been established. The current application is a reserved matters application for 298 residential units. And what we're considering tonight is the details relating to layout, scale, appearance and landscaping. 40 of the new dwellings will be affordable housing in 12 shared ownership, eight social rent and 20 affordable rent. And it should be noted that the outline permission did not require any affordable housing to be provided on site. So this is above and beyond the, um, the, the requirements of the outline permission. In addition, 129 dwellings will be privately rented and 129 will be um, sold on the open, open market. A key component of the outline scheme when it was considered was the delivery of the redevelopment of the Partington Shopping Centre, which has obviously been carried out um, a number of years ago. In addition, further benefit, benefit secured outline stage with the provision of 1.4 hectares of open space, including the neighbourhood equipped play area, and the provision of um, a total of 2.4 hectares of open space is being provided. The green loop and a contribution towards highway and public transport improvement is also being sought in addition has also been secured in addition to those sought on the Hall Lane site. As with the Hall Lane site, extensive landscaping will 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 be carried out throughout the development, um, and and the Lock Lane site will see 129 sorry 290 trees be planted, um, a new pedestrian promenade formed along the entire length of the site with the canal and the green loop, green loop proposals will extend around the periphery, will extend um, around the periphery of Partington. New vehicle access is proposed um, opposite Our Lady Lauders Primary School and this arrangement was approved at outline stage. Part of the approved access requires the applicant to provide new car parking for staff of the primary school in order to reduce the on-street car parking, which you can see in this photograph, the location of the new access um, in order um, to reduce this. Um, an application has been submitted and is currently under con consideration. The next couple of slides show some further house types um, which will be provided again across the whole of the site. This particular one is a um, three bedroomed two storey dwelling with an integrated garage, another detached three bedroom property and um, a further property that could either be rendered or in brick with integral garages and, and three storeys. In summary, the benefits of the Lock Lane development will be 298 new dwellings, which significantly contributes to the shortfall of in-housing land supply that the council is experiencing, will provide 13% of the units as affordable housing and secure contributions towards highways, improved environmental works, and tree planting and greater cycle and pedestrian connectivity, as well as contributing towards the regeneration aims of the wider Partington area. On this basis, both applications are recommended for approval subject to conditions, with the Hall Lane application also subject to a Section 106 agreement. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lowes. Um, we're going to hear from uh, two speakers now. The first speaker will be speaking against the uh, Hall Lane application, uh, and that is Katie McMurray. Ms. McMurray, are you with us on the call? I am, yes. Thank you. I am, I am Catherine Collins, but I think if you get it off my personal email, you get McMurray, so I do apologise. <laughs> okay, no problem at all. We, we, can, we can hear you well. Um, so you'll have three minutes to, to speak to us uh, with your comments. When, when you get to three minutes, I'll uh, just ask you to, to wrap up. 
Um, so if you could um, if you could speak to us now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. I'm representing a number of residents of Inglewood Close who will all be directly affected by this development, um, all of whom have, have read this statement and agreed it as well. Although the residents of the road do not object to Partington being developed, especially considering the country's housing shortage, the way this application of 151 dwellings and the adjoining application of 298 dwellings have been submitted seems not to take several factors into consideration. The existing access to the development, proposed condition number 31 from the officer's report, is welcomed, however, it does not consider construction traffic prior to occupation. Also, I can confirm the traffic problems continue further than the roundabout stated to the next one adjacent to the retail units at the junction of Hall and Lock Lane. They present a significant hazard at all times of the day currently, and both roundabouts will be accessed by the majority of the traffic using the development site. If the committee consents this development, it is requested that the wording of condition 31 is amended to include the Hall Lock Lane roundabout as well. Uh, visual amenity. Traffic Council's own documents require a 27 metre distance between properties across private gardens and 10.5 from property boundary at the rear. This, has, this does not appear to have been adhered to within the developments for plot 300 to 308, 312 to 319 as examples within your own development. Surely the same guidance should be measured from existing houses backing onto this proposed development also, several of which short thought, at short. Sorry, The following have been taken from the developer's own plans, which contradicts the officer's report, paragraphs 94, 97 and 98. The following relates to the properties on Inglewood Close. Number 37, only having a 6.5 metre rear garden, leaves approximately 16 metres between the properties. The rear gardens of both plots 268, 269 will overlook, be overlooked by number 36. Number 34 and 32, there is 25 metres between properties, although it is compliant at the 10.5 metre boundary. Number 26 and 24, they, only have, they have 26 metres between properties, although that is also compliant at 10.5 to the boundary. Number 22 and 20, are under the 10.5 metres required to the boundary, 6.9 metres from both their conservatories used as living space and dining rooms, um, and then only 21.5 metres to the original, from their original building to the new building. Numbers 18 and 16 are under the 10.5 metre boundary and only 7.2 from both conservatories which used as living space. Noted in the officer's report, it is the, it is the impact on the existing bungalow, paragraph 100 to 101, as stated, the report, as stated in the report that 2.5 metre fencing has been requested to mitigate the impact of privacy on the property, although this has not been followed throughout the boundary treatment drawings. I request that the same 2.5 metre fence is stipulated along the boundary between Inglewood Close and plots 266 to 280. Site clearance. Contrary to the proposed condition, number 11 and 18, site clearance works have already commenced with trees being felled outside of the property boundary. Miss uh, Collins, could you just start to yeah. wrap up for me now, please? Um, particularly on the land behind numbers 40, 42, 44 and 46. I did enclose those photos on the report that I sent through. It is requested that prior to construction, local residents have the opportunity to comment and discuss items within the phasing scheme and Kemp, specifically construction traffic management plan parking vehicles, um, hours of construction activity and details of lighting as we already have your traffic, I'm sorry, not your traffic, the traffic from the construction work that are clearing the land parking on the road. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Collins. Um, Mr. Evanson, um, uh, Miss Mrs. Collins mentioned um, the roundabout at Lock Lane, Hall Lane, uh, and whether there should be improvements there. I don't know whether that's something you could advise on either either now or when we've heard from the other speakers yeah i, I either way i can do it now or, or when you've had some comments from other speakers and if members ask any other questions regarding um i don't mind either way okay let, let's hear from the other speakers and then we can come back to you in, in case there's any other um sort of traffic highway matters sure. um we'll hear now from uh, another speaker speaking against the uh, the application for the land adjoining the the manchester ship canal uh, and um, that is uh, Charlotte Fox. Miss Fox, are you on the call? 
uh, Miss Fox isn't on the call. Uh, she's requested that her statement be read out, and I will do that, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Miss Curley. Okay. Um, um, I'm writing this statement of, as a local of the area, arguing against the planning application adjoining mo both Lock Lane and Thurmill Road. There are several reasons to why the construction work for this application should not be approved, many of which I will briefly discuss below. Um, firstly, pollution. Uh, regarding the pollution levels, plans to add 298 dwellings into the area of Partington will raise carbon dioxide emissions considerably. With transportation and construction work being the two main contributing factors to air pollution, it is without a doubt this application is a cause for environmental concern. With this in mind, increasing air pollution will not only impose a risk to the environmental features of Partington, but will also put the health and well-being of locals in question. This alone goes to show one reason of many to why this development will do more harm than good. How can an increase in carbon dioxide emissions be a benefit to this area? Loss of privacy. Secondly, I would like to raise the issue which has been highly discussed by locals of Lock Lane, the loss of privacy. Personally, having lived on Lock Lane for over 30 years, the concept of there being housing built behind my own home, so close to our back garden, is shocking. The layout of housing being so close to current locals living here is not only unfair, but opposes risks to our privacy due to other residents of this proposed build overlooking our own. Although we understand developments occur from time to time, the privacy of Locks Lane's structure was a contributing factor to why many of us moved here. Therefore, developing houses on land so close to our own is not something we thought would occur, especially as the land behind our homes is greenfield. We believe such a build should have aimed to be located onto brownfield land, which would also have decreased environmental destruction. Um, conservation and harm to wildlife. Relating to the conservation of nature and wildlife, there are mass concerns regarding the impact this plan has and will continue to have on nature if planning goes ahead. As stated, I have lived on this road the majority of my life and I am beyond appalled at the way decades of precious wildlife has been destroyed because of this planning application. It really is a shame to see more valuable nature ripped apart for the benefit of a business's finances. For many years, I have not only taken care of the wildlife living behind my home, but I have also enjoyed regular walks nearby the canal with my family and friends. It is beyond a shame to see such beautiful wildlife be ripped from their habitats and nature be treated so disgracefully. Now, if you still do not believe this planning application opposes risks to the nature and wildlife of Partington, then come and take a look for yourself. Come and see what this plan has already done to some of Manchester's greatest natural habitats and wildlife. Noise pollution. I'm quite astounded by the fact that a recent noise assessment has taken place and resulted in noise not being needed for consideration regarding this build. Yet while writing this, I'm currently sat in my living room listening to constant noise coming from the deforestation taking place right behind our back garden. Now, how accurate must the 3D no noise model be if clearly noise has already impacted myself, my children and my neighbours? To conclude, I completely disagree with the planning application to build on the land nearby Lock Lane. As stated, this judgment is based on the impact of pollution, loss of privacy, harm to wildlife and noise pollution, which will occur. In addition, I just want to ask yourself this question. If the planning application was destined for success and the benefit of locals, how have come there are so many reasons to object? When did wealth become more important than welfare? If you take anything from my argument today, let this be this. This planning application has and will continue to cause extreme harm to the wildlife and natural environment within Partington, harm which is both irreversible and a national and global concern. Why not choose to save our environment while you have the chance? Thank you for listening. I hope my concerns along with others can be heard. I think it, it seems many times the planning committee ignores the needs of locals and prioritises other aspects like financial gain. So please bear these reasons stated by locals in mind when deciding whether or not to continue with the planning application. The local myself, I feel we know what is best for the area we have grown up and lived in, so, so do not ignore these serious concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Curley. Um, we'll hear from a speaker in favour of, of both applications now, and that's uh, Mr Pemberton. Mr Pemberton, are you on the call? I am, yes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr Pemberton. Um, because you're speaking to both applications, uh, you'll have uh, six minutes to speak to us. So, uh, and I'll, I'll just ask you to wrap up if you're, if you're we reached to six minutes. Um, so if you could um, address your comments to us now, I'd be grateful. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I, I'm addressing you today in respect of the two applications for a total of 449 dwellings on land at Lock Lane and Hall Lane in Partington. The site is contiguous and has been planned as a single, en single entity. Outline planning permission for the development of up to 550 dwellings was originally granted on the Lock Lane site in June 2010 
and the permission extended in September 2019. The principle of residential development at Lock Lane has therefore been established. Irrespective of this, Partington remains a priority regeneration area for the Council and planning policy supports the delivery of new residential development. At Lock Lane, approval is sought for the details of appearance, layout, scale and landscaping for the erection of 298 dwellings pursuant to the outline permission. This includes the delivery of 40 affordable homes, which is 13%. At Hall Lane, a full application seeks permission for a further 151 dwellings. This includes the delivery of 77 affordable homes, equating to 51% of the overall provision. An additional access onto Hall Lane will provide a loop through the site, a fact welcomed by your highway officers. Countryside have submitted a separate application for the improvement of the parking at the primary school opposite the site entrance. This has been designed in collaboration with the school and is currently being considered. In total, 449 dwellings are proposed, including a mix of two, three and four bedroom homes, ensuring that local needs for both smaller and larger family homes are being met. The 117 affordable homes at 26% is significantly more than the policy requirement of 10% in good market conditions. These affordable homes are tenure blind and include a mix of shared ownership, affordable rent and social rent tenures. This represents a considerable contribution to meeting affordable housing needs. Detailed analysis of the design and character of the area has been undertaken to inform the scheme. The design of the house types has evolved during the consideration of the applications. They fully complement the character of the surrounding area and have the support of your officers. The layouts have responded to existing homes adjoining the site with interfaces distances meeting the council standards. The scheme will provide 2.4 hectares of public open space. This will be split into five separate areas incorporating play facilities and a green loop. The scheme also provides extensive landscaping, making the proposals an attractive place to live. This includes a boulevard of trees along the main roads within the site and significant landscape improvements along the ship canal. It will also incorporate and improve public rights of way which exist within and adjacent to the site. The combined development is significantly below the 550 dwellings taken as a long-standing commitment by the council. The scheme before you will deliver around 100 units less. The reduced number of properties has been caused by two main reasons, the need to accommodate additional flood storage and the absence of high density apartments from the scheme. The scheme has, however, significant viability issues and requires grant funding to deliver the affordable housing. The applicants have reluctantly agreed to the financial contributions towards the Carrington Relief Road from the Hall Lane site in order to avoid further delays in progressing this scheme. Great places as the registered provider for the affordable homes and Sigma for the private rented ha housing need to make a start on site this financial year to secure home, Homes England funding. Any delay to the scheme puts this funding at risk and thus the delivery of the affordable homes of, on both schemes. In addition to the Carrington Relief Road contributions, the applicant has also agreed to the further the full education contribution of £451,000. These contributions are made even though viability matters have not been concluded. Overall, the layout of the development accords with, with the broad principles established by the Extant Outline Plan Commission. It fully complies with the policies of the development plan and national planning policy. No significant adverse impacts have been identified for either scheme. They represent a high quality development within a priority area for regeneration. Countryside has a proven track record of delivering homes in the Northwest and specialises in building communities. The approval of these applications will make a significant contribution to Trafford's housing land supply in the absence of a five year supply. It will provide much needed market and affordable housing to meet identified needs while bringing economic, environmental and social benefits. We fully endorse your officer's recommendation to approve these applications and ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pemberton. Um, Mr. Everson, could we come back to you now for the advice on the Lock Lane, Hall Lane roundabout, please? Indeed, yeah. Um, yeah, we did um, consider the, the roundabout in question, but as mentioned um, a, a few times tonight, the, the site itself has permission for some 550 houses 
all be the full application is additional land but the the number which we are considering this evening and we've considered them together as well and as they are being heard tonight the the development itself already got planning outline planning permission and whilst there's some changes to the distribution of the traffic with the introduction of the whole lane access the impact on the roundabout which has been raised the whole lane lock lane roundabout isn't significant whereby we could justify any improvements over and above the the outline permission which was granted so therefore we didn't feel justified in requiring um any improvements and so we we've we've considered it in the in the realm yes there is a potential issue with regards to could they build out fully the 550 dwellings on the site which has got outline planning permission but we believe that's unlikely given the flood issues on the remaining parts of the land so we believe that the two developments combined is below the outline and we didn't feel we could justify any improvements at that junction okay thank you very much that's that's really helpful uh councillor jerome i think you had a question thanks chair it was just a quick question for sarah lowe's uh, i think you mentioned in the um in, in your presentation the landscaping plan and I think you had a fixed number of trees. I just noticed in the uh, officer's report, it, I think it does, does say that um, the, ma the master plan does detail individual trees across the site, but as, but as no stated breakdown of species numbers are yet provided. I just wondered if that had changed and you had a kind of definitive number of the trees they were supplying. Yes, yes, we do have a definitive number of trees now. And um, that's been an update from the, um, the the report, um, so 390 trees across both sites, 100 on the Hall Lane site and 290 on the Lock Lane site. And do you have a breakdown of which trees that, and which numbers, or is it? Not, not of species. Um, what I was thinking I, of the, I was thinking of the larger, the oak trees and the. Yes, no, we don't have details of species. Yes. Yes, there are um, com comprehensive landscaping um, conditions on the, um, the, the the scheme, which would en enable us to get the, the breakdown of species. But I think the report, if I'm correct, does um, reference the amount and size. Um, so the different ty the, 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 the different si types, you know, the street trees, the garden trees, um, it breaks that down into the numbers. That's somewhere in the report. I can find out what paragraphs that is for you. If you just bear with me a second. Unless you want to answer in the chat. Oh. Yeah, OK. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Lowe's. Um, just looking for members wishing to speak now in relation to both applications. So um, council accordingly. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'm happy to pr propose both uh, applications. I think they're good pr pr proposals. They've been in the um, development for a long, long time, probably as long as I've been a councillor, to be honest. Um, uh, they're not perfect by any means, but I, I do support. Um, it, it's not going to alter my view of the, this, but I do think it's regretful that all the focus in sort of um, traffic alleviation is on the Carrington Relief Road when you have a viaduct immediately above this development that um, I think it's Hamilton Davis have been looking to develop for connectivity for a long time and is still considered viable by Transport for Greater Manchester but we don't seem to do anything about it. The, the, particularly with these two proposals, their proximity to Earlham Station, just across the canal, is this incredible asset to squander that we don't do anything about. We talk about getting people onto the road, but I looked at the timetables for um, Earlham Station and it's 15 minutes to Manchester the centre of Manchester, even slower to Warrington, even faster to Swat Warrington. And it does occur to me that one of these days, people are going to look back and think, why did we never develop a link over to the other side for people to walk or use light, light trans transit to? 
Um, but that is an issue for another day. It's not appropriate to this. I just couldn't resist be, being under that viaduct, these two applications. I do support them. Um, and um, I'm happy to listen to other people, but as, as it stands, I, I'm happy to propose. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Connolly. It's a it's a good point, well made. I think about about the viaduct and and having another crossing across the um, across the ship canal, which is you know which is sorely needed. Um, Councillor Carey, you wanted to speak. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, there are so many plans at the minute for Partington, the Warburton site, these two sites. Carrington included, I'm just going to talk about what I always talk about is education provision. Um, reading the reports, the first report for the Hall Lane site states 451,000, which is really welcome. But then in the report for the second site, the larger site, it actually says that, it, um, that it's disappointing that there is no uh, developer funding for that part of the site. It does really concern me, you know, 451,000 spread over three primary schools. The secondary school probably can uh, take some children in, but those three primary schools are really going to struggle. What can that provide? Is that enough for the amount of houses that are being built just over those two sites? We do need people watching this tonight in Partington and Carrington do need to know what this money can be spent, what, how this money is going to be spent, what it's going to be spent on. Is it enough to provide the education places that their children, who because they already live there, are now going to be competing for. We just need some transparency and clarity over education funding for this part of the borough with the amount of houses. I'm a big, massive supporter of this de these developments being built. I'm, as I say every single time, I'm a Partington boy, I'm so proud of it. This will help with this relief road. You know, we need more houses. It's a great place to live. Like we've just been speaking about, maybe this development of connecting over the water to uh, the railway line, fantastic. But these people need to know, can their kids get an a place in education? Is this money enough? If it isn't, why isn't it not enough? Why are we even considering the second application going through if there's not going to be enough cash there? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Carey. Um, Ms Coley, I wonder if you could just, just address that point Councillor Carey makes. So my understanding on the second application is that we're approving reserve matters. So... Um, you know, in a sense that the, the, the chance has gone to get a contribution from that application towards education provision. And I, and I think it addresses, you know, the, the contribution we secured was towards the, um, was towards the, the shopping centre, which, which has been done. Um, is, is that right? Yes, that, that, that's correct. Um, when the outline um, permission was considered, um, the benefits of the re re um, development of the, the shopping centre and the other benefits that it pro was providing um, and there was viability issues wider on the site and um, that there wasn't there wasn't an opportunity to secure education contributions at that time um, and because we're only considering the reserve matters at this stage which is just the detail we aren't able to re unfortunately we're unable to revisit the education contributions for the lock lane scheme thank you miss those um Councillor Proctor, you wanted to speak. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I mean, there is a, there's an awful lot to commend this. Um, this well, these both these applications. Um, obviously, the main one is it contributes to the the housing supply, which is a massive issue in Trafford, and um, you know that will will massively contribute to that. Uh, I think it's quite a good a good mix and range of properties, and the affordable percentages. It's to be commended, really, and it's it's much higher than uh, it needed to be. Um, I think I'm not, I'm not particularly happy with the the social rent numbers. If I, if I work it out, there's only a total of 22, which for this number of, of units is 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 quite low and um, disappointing, really. But I suppose that's that's the best we're going to get. And I can understand a lot of the sort of local residents' concerns about the. The developments because it's going to change Partington completely. It's going to be a completely different place than it is already. So that vast numbers of people coming in is, is going to massively change the, the whole nature of the area. And uh, I wonder how many of those people will actually be, you know, local local Partington people. But anyway, that's a that's a separate matter. Um, my my major concern lies around the the level of congestion. 
Uh, obviously, we've got the the relief road and the level of parking parking facilities spaces is is quite good. Um, so I think par parking's not particularly much of an issue, but we're going to get large numbers of, of cars. Let's be honest. In, in these new developments and is the relief road and the what's been proposed going to be sufficient to satisfy that i'm not so sure i i do have sort of concerns concerns about that particularly when you take into account the poor level of public transport and public provision in partington i know there's some money going into that but um i do worry that all these cars um, are going to have a major impact on the congestion levels and impact on not only the, the new people moving in, but the, the, the Partington residents themselves. I know highways have looked at this and said that the, they think there's going to be no major issues. I, I'm not so sure. It does, does really worry me. Uh, so I think overall, I, you know, I will be voting for the in favour of the applications. But I do have concerns about the congestion, traffic congestion levels going forward. So I'd be really happy to hear a bit more about that and what other members have to say on, on that particular issue. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Proctor. Um, Ms. Lowes, did you want to come back on something that, that Councillor Proctor said? Sorry, no, that comment was in relation to um, Councillor Carey's. Sorry, right. Thank you. Yeah, I've just, sorry, I've just seen the message. Um, we've got uh, Councillor Morgan. You wanted to. Sorry, I beg your pardon, Councillor Jerome. You wanted to to speak on the on the application as well. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, overall, I, I think this is a good application. I mean, the the affordable housing um, uh, does look pretty good to me. I mean, uh, and also the the amount of family homes, um, which is a really good percentage of, of family homes, three bed plus. Um, so I, I think that that will contribute to kind of Chaffer's overall housing need. Um, I'm happy with the design of the houses as well. I, I think the design is, is generally good. And I think officers have done a good job on that. Um, I also was quite pleased with the energy efficiency. I, I like the, um, the positive input ventilation system. I think that's welcome. I mean, if, if you don't know, it pulls and filters fresh air into the house while removing stale air. This removes polluted air in, in the house, creating a healthier indoor environment, which is a very good thing. It's not quite the mechanical ventilation heat recovery system used in passive house design, uh, which all, also requires a tight insulation, but it is welcome. Um, but I thought it was a real shame that the developer is using gas boilers um, when they could be moving away from fossil fuels. And if you do look at the MPPF 0.151B, it says consider identifying suitable areas for renewable and low carbon energy sources and supporting infrastructure where this would help secure their development. And I do think the location of this development in terms of solar panels, um, with wind uh, generation, um, that we, we, we shouldn't be looking at gas boilers, um, and especially with our climate emergency. So I'm, 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 it's a bit of a shame that uh, officers didn't do more maybe to persuade the developer to, to, to look at kind of a, a you know, a different type of energy for, for the houses. But the positive input ventilation system really is welcome because they, they do improve air quality within houses uh, and improve people's health. So I'm, I'm pleased about that. I also like the landscaping topographical plan. Um, it's really welcome that they're putting in silver birch, black cherry, copper beech and Costa oak as part of the landscaping scheme. I think that's a really, really good mix of trees and native trees. And also the landscaping um, with the wildflower area is also welcomed. Um, and I think they're gonna be using Emma's Gate Seeds, general pur purpose wildflower mix. And if you look at that mix, it's got things like yarrow, yellow rattle, among others, a really good native mix of, of wildflower. So I hope Mrs. Lowe's is right. And they are actually committing to using that, th those seed sources and those trees, because uh, I think they will be a good feature in this housing development. And one I, I think is a good one. But what does really um, disappoint me about the ecology, I like the ecology on the site, as I've just said, with the landscaping. But as the uh, GM EU does point out in the officer's report, uh, 188, um, it does recommend further areas of semi-natural green spaces provided within the application boundary or a contribution made off-site 
habit habitat and green space provision. And because we're giving a developer contribution so highly to uh, the, um, the link road, I, I don't call it a relief road, I don't think it is, I think it's the link road. Um, and because we're giving so much money to that, we're not um, contributing to ecology offsite. And that does worry me because we're going to see application after application in Partington and Carrington, where we're not uh, committing money to it, the ecology of the area. And I think that, um, also the travel plan for this application, um, you know, public transport, as Councillor Proctor pointed out, is, is pretty woeful and needs a, a large amount of in, in investment. So I think that's another problem. But I did see in the, um, the additional information report that the public right away situation is looking more positive. Um, but on conclusion, I think I'm um, inclined to um, go with off officer recommendation um, and, and support this. But I do have concerns, as I said, about the offsite ecology, which is not being improved, and the uh, tra public transport. But I do like some of the energy efficiency measures, but I think it could be better, especially on the, ga the gas boilers. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Jerome. Uh, Councillor Morgan, you wanted to speak. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to keep this really, really brief because we've got a lot to get through and I think anything I've said will be repeated um, by um, other previous members. I, I think this is um, generally a pretty exciting um, development. Um, um, we need the more, more houses um, and I think, I mean, look through the scheme, I think there's a real lot of positives. As Councillor Collingly said, it isn't perfect. I do agree with him in terms of the fact that uh, it, we had a very short public transport link um, just over the uh, over the um, the border. Um, it really does make sense, and why we aren't doing these sorts of things, I really don't know. Especially as good um, public transport is a real um, thing that attracts people. Um, I th I, the one point I really want to raise, and I do share Councillor Proctor's point about transport and the road congestion, but is what Councillor Carey said. Um, this is I've only been on this committee I've been in a councillor for less than two years and that this is possibly the third or fourth big development that we are building in Partington and yet again every single time this comes up about school provision um, and we really really do need to uh, actually properly address this not just kind of um, say well we need the houses and um, therefore we've got to get it through this is a real issue and you know I'm sure other members have these in terms of really popular schools and problems in terms of getting kids into school places and I really really do need to start seriously addressing the, the school shortage in primary education in um, Trafford there are particular year groups which is really causing problems um, and it's it is just going to be a real real disaster for, for, for families if we don't really seriously address it but Having said that, just come back to what I will say. I will be supporting this um, tonight. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Um, Councillor Rigby, I, I know you want to, to speak. Uh, I've seen a message. Um, I'm just sort of taking speakers in the order that they come up in the chat. So I think, uh, Councillor Acton, uh, you had a question, I think, if I could come to you now. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you, Ben. Um, I think there is a, a, a lot uh, and people have uh, said there's a lot of positives in the development and I am uh, supportive of it. Uh, I think it will help in terms of um, significantly help with the regeneration of uh, Partington. The question is um, around GM police uh, and uh, their comments uh, designed for security. Uh, uh, they, they have no objection in principle subject to condition requiring the development to reflect the physical security specification set out in the crime impact statements. Um, and I, I just wonder whether that has actually been included in the report. I couldn't see it or I'm, I'm, I might have uh, missed it. Uh, but but I, I would hope that we would, um, you know, uh, agree with the specifications that they've set out. And that's on both reports. Thank you, Councillor Acton. Miss Lowe's, is that something you could help us with, whether that's in the conditions? Yes, I believe it to be. I'm just looking through the conditions now to find the numbers, if you just bear with me a second. That's fine. We can we can come back to that, uh, Miss Lowe's. Um, Councillor Rigby, uh, you wanted to speak on the applications. 
Yes, thanks very much indeed, Chair. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to repeat something which um, Councillor Morgan and Carey have brought up. Um, I know I brought up education previously. I don't want to sound like um, an old gramophone record, but we're not getting any answers. As, so I, I really, this isn't a criticism, it's more for clarity, as Councillor Carey did allude to. Um, the application relating to school places does mention the shortage quite clearly of primary school places in Partington. Um, you know, 449 additional families is going to attract an awful lot of children. I know the report states in the developer is going to contribution of 450,747 450, have been calculated. However, it, it would appear that the local, the primary schools themselves have not been consulted to determine if there is scope at these schools to have places. Which, um, you know, as the report says, there are four schools in Partington, and I well know that, one secondary and three primary. The primary does have capacity and ample capacity, but the three primary schools don't. The schools are either academy or um, voluntary aided. And I can't find any evidence that the schools have been contacted, which I thought was important. You know, it's disappointing. Um, as in this report, you know, it's a good report, it's a great report. We receive a good deal of information on infrastructure, proposed highways, landscaping, ecology, and biodiversity, and all this will happen. We're given assurances in order that we can make a decision or reach a decision. But little de detail is included to ensure ourselves as members that will be sufficient school places for families. You know, not just families moving into the area, but existing families. I say it's disappointing because I'm sure members know it's the council's duty to ensure that children living in our borough are offered a school place. It's not the school's responsibility. It's not the developer's responsibility. It's the local authority's responsibility throughout the country to provide school places for the children living in their borough. Um, so, is there the ability for these schools to expand? Can they build? Is there the funding to it that will make this possible? And the bottom line is, shouldn't there be a more depth, in-depth report to say that in increasing the school sizes is feasible, is a possibility? Wouldn't it be embarrassing if a school put in an application to increase in size and we refused it on, on planning grounds. You know, this is the practicalities of this. You know, I'm not trying to be awkward. I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but I think with a, um, certainly a development of this size, bringing 449 children, which will need places at years one to 11, years one to 11, it's not just a year entry one or not just a year entry seven in secondary schools. It's a year, every year we'll have to, find where no every year is full we, we've been told this so it's it's a real problem because a community relies on its schools a, show me a successful community and i'll show you a successful school we all know that as counselors but parents become very dissatisfied they become angry they become disillusioned when they cannot get this place at a local school for their children and i can't see any evidence real evidence that sufficient um, inquiries and consultation has taken place that assures us that that's going to happen. I'm sorry to labour the point, if you don't mind, but, pardon, pardon, but I think it's a real issue which should be considered now and in the future. Thank you very much indeed for the time, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Rigby. Uh, Miss Lowe's or Miss Coley, is there... Anything more you'd want to say on that? I know we've sort of answered the point about the the contribution um, towards education. I think Councillor Rigby's 
wanting more than that, I suppose, about how that provision is going to going to appear. Is is that something we need to address tonight uh, in, in this committee? I don't think it is. I think I think just to just to clarify, we've we've sought the full contribution that we can from the whole lane application, and we cannot secure any further contribution on the lock lane and um, the details in how um, that is applied and how we develop those schemes going forward with education I think is, is a different conversation for um, a different point in time and um, we do consult with education and education give us very detailed comments in terms of which schools can potentially expand how they could expand and and where the places are needed so that does obviously um, link back to where we, we get the contributions and how we take those forward. Thank you, Miss Those. That that's helpful. So yeah, I think I think the position is we we've secured a contribution on the um, on the full application, uh, which is detailed. We can't go back and, and revisit those matters already approved on the application, um, and and how how those monies are spent and how the provision appears is 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 not is not a decision uh, is not a decision for us. Um, Councillor Minnis, you wanted to speak, and I, and I think after Councillor Minnis, I'll, I'll see if anyone wants to move the motion to um, to vote to approve the applications. Uh, Councillor Minnis. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I don't want to um, repeat what a lot of people said. Um, <laughs> I've, I've got a few concerns, but uh, I think it's been summarised by a lot of, lot of the other comments. Um, the school thing is one that does concern me the most. Um, I understand that we can't ask for contributions on one of the schemes um, because that's already been gone and we have on, on the other and we've got the full contributions. We can't go any further with that. Um, the I just wonder whether in future we can have, um, as like effectively Councillor Rigby's uh, pointed out, in the report that we can have that um, those conversations that have been have ha been had with the education department about schools potentially expanding and therefore how much that would cost to expand those schools whether those conversations can be um, recorded in the report so that we can see that when we when we're um, approving these these decisions um, then that would be really helpful uh, thank you thanks thank you councillor minister um miss curley i think you wanted to uh, answer, answer Councillor Minister's question. Yes, if I could. Uh, uh, the, the, the difficulty we have here is is separating out what are planning matters for a planning report and what are matters for the uh, Council's Education Authority with its school place planning. Now there is a uh, already a reporting mechanism for those kind of conversations about which schools should be expanded, what funding is available, um, how that might happen, and 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 where. And that reporting is is through the exec member for, for uh, education and into, the, and into the executive, it would not be appropriate to include that information in the planning application because it would go beyond the scope of, of that planning application. We consult our education colleagues. They tell us whether there is a shortage of school places in the area. They tell us what contribution they, they would want to seek. Um, so sometimes they are able to identify a specific scheme it would go for. And this goes for all applications, not, not just this one and not, not just the one in Partington. Going further than that and having a discussion about what, what particular uh, school place options are being considered is just beyond the remit of this committee and beyond the remit of the planning applications under discussion. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Ms. Coley. That, that's, that's great. That answered, that answered my question. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Coley. Um, I think we've had a, I think we've had a lot of contributions, a um, lot, lot of um, a decent debate there about, about the issues. Um, Council accordingly, I think, moved that we um, move the motion that we accept the the recommendation of the officers on on both of the applications. I don't think anyone has has uh, suggested a motion to to reject either recommendation. Um, is anyone willing to second Councillor Cording this? I'll second that, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Acton. So it's been moved and seconded that we accept officer recommendation in relation to both applications. So we'll we'll move to the votes now, and we'll vote on on each application separately. So um, first of all, we'll vote on the application for the land off Hall Lane, which is the application for full planning permission. That's the one that starts on page thirty three. Um, so the officer recommendation is minded to grant subject to the to the legal agreement. Um, so I'll go through the names of councillors in, in the order that they come up on my uh, on my screen. So first of all, uh, Councillor Rigby. 
support the officer's recommendation, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Rigby. Uh, Councillor Proctor. Support officer recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor Proctor. Uh, Councillor Acton. Support the recommendations, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Acton. Uh, Councillor Akinola. I support the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Akinola. Uh, Councillor Jerome. Thank you. Sorry, was that support, Councillor Jerome? Yeah, I support of the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Jerome. Uh, Councillor Morgan. Support of the recommendations, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Uh, Councillor Dr. Barclay. I support officer recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor Dr. Barclay. Uh, Councillor Minnis. Um, I support, support the officer's recommendation to grant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Minnis. Councillor Accordingly. Support officer's recommendation to grant, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Accordingly. Uh, Councillor Carey. Thank you, Chairman. I support the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Carey. Um, I'll be supporting the recommendation as well. I don't think I've forgot anyone. Um, please shout up if I have omitted anyone. Uh, so I think that's uh, unanimously uh, in favour of um, officer recommendation on the first application. If we go now to the second application, which is the um, the application for the, the land adjacent to the Manchester Ship Canal, it starts on page 106 of the bundle. Uh, and uh, the rec officer recommendation here is to grant the application. So I will uh, go through members in the in the same order as, as first time round if I could. So, um, Councillor Rigby, on the on the second application, how would you like to vote? Yes, Chairman, I support the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Rigby. Uh, Councillor Proctor. Councillor Proctor, are you still on the call? Sorry, I had problems with my mute button. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, support officer recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor Proctor. Councillor Acton. Support the recommendations, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Acton. Uh, Councillor Akinola. Support the recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor Akinola. Uh, Councillor Jerome. To grant, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Jerome. Uh, Councillor Morgan. Support officer recommendation to grant, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Uh, Councillor Dr. Barclay. Sorry, I support the officer recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor Dr. Barclay. Uh, Councillor Minnis. I support the officer's recommendation to grant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Minnis. Councillor Accordingly. Support officer's recommendation to grant, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Carey. Thank you, Chairman. I support the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor. And I will also be uh, supporting the recommendation. So again, that's uh, unanimous on, on that application to approve the officer recommendation to grant. So I think that brings us to the end of those two items for uh, Partington. I wonder if we could get, I don't know if Councillor Williams has remained on the call or whether we need to message him to rejoin us for the next item. Still here, Ben, don't worry. Oh, right. thanks. <laughs> Over to you. Um, so we're now turning to 64 to 66 Talbot Road, which is on page 170 of the committee report. Um, the application is going to be introduced by Mr Pearson, I believe. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Just bear with me while I try and share my screen. Can everybody see uh, see the screen now? I think it's uh, this way. Okay, this is a scheme for 149 residential apartments in two apartment buildings and the retention of uh, Victorian Villa as an office. You can see the site here, um, just off Talbot Road. This is Oakland House, the really tall, long office building, the British Gas Building here, and the town halls just off the map down in, in this corner here. 
Um, number 64 uh, Talbot Road. Uh, this one here is a Victorian villa. We consider it to be a non-designated heritage asset. The poor quality extensions and outbuildings at the back will, will be demolished. And 66 Talbot Road and Botanic Old House, both former offices, are to be demolished to accommodate the development. Some photographs of the existing buildings there. You can see the villa on the right and the existing office buildings on the left. Uh, Next slide is site plan. Um, there are two blocks of developments. There's a six storey residential apartment block proposed on the front of the site here, sitting next to the Victorian villa. Um, and then we've got the uh, a further block B, uh, residential apartment block at the back of the site. And that ranges in height from 13 storeys at its closest point to Oakland House and drops down to 11 storeys on the right hand side as you as you looked at on screen. Block A um, is located at the front of the site. Uh, it's six storeys, as I mentioned, uh, 33 units in this, uh, 12 are one bed, 17 are two bed, and four are two bed duplex apartments on the ground floor fronting Talbot Road. Those are here. Apologies, that's not an easy drawing to, uh, to see on screen. Side elevation just below it. And the next slide shows you the rear elevation um, and the main side elevation. Block B, the, the tallest building, uh, would accommodate 116 dwellings, 65 one bed, 48 two bed, and th three three bed apartments. There's basement car parking for 17 vehicles. 37 units within Block B have a private terrace and balcony space. Uh, these are generally recessed and they add interest to the appearance of the building, in their opinion. Uh, there you see the, the front elevation of it. That's the one that faces the uh, landscaped courtyard between the two blocks. There you see the rear elevation, which will look over White City Retail Park. And then the two side elevations. slide there indicates the landscape strategy um, and you can see at the front of the site here the uh, ground floor duplex units in um, in the six-story building will have their own access ways and and front gardens um, in between we've we've got a, a communal residence garden here and along here the ground floor units um, in this rear block also have some private garden space here and then on the roof there's also um, an indoor, both an indoor and an outdoor uh, communal area for residents. Next slide shows you the street scene that's um, sort of heading uh, east up into to Manchester, looking down towards the town hall. There's Oakland House, uh, the, the Ritzel building. Um, you can see the villa hiding amongst the, the trees here. Those trees do exist, by the way, that's not artistic license. Um, the six storey uh, building here, and then obviously the taller block at the back. Okay, um, the design is obviously contemporary. Um, it does take design cues from number 64 Talbot Road through the interpretation of design features such as chamfered corners and brickwork detailing. Bring the next slide up now. That's one of the, the CGI's uh, taken from just across uh, the other side of Talbot Road. Uh, a bit about the scheme that the principle of development of residential development on, Bra on this Brownfield site is considered to be acceptable and will obviously contribute towards the council's five year housing land supply. The scale and massing of the scheme is considered to be appropriate to the site uh, in its context, in, in the view of officers. Um, as you can see, the development steps down in height from this back from the left hand side here at 13 storeys down to 11 storeys here. And as I mentioned, the, the six storey block at the front. It's considered that the design is, is high quality, uh, the use of red brick, projecting bays, you can see here on both buildings, terraces um, up here at the higher levels, um, brickwork detailing, there's a lot of brickwork detailing on, on the proposal. 
uh, along with well-designed fenestration details, they all we think um, add interest and should successfully break up the facades of the of the proposed development. The scheme provides 33 affordable units, um, all shared ownership, uh, which represents a 22% provision. Now that also represents a change you will have noticed to the original officer report. It's detailed on paragraph six of the additional information report. And whilst it's not com policy compliant in, in the sense that there are no affordable rented units, there's no split, um, officers think that due to the considerable uplift in the overall affordable housing provision, um, which would have only been 10% previously, we think that is an acceptable uh, offer and, and represents a betterment on the, on the original policy compliant 10% offer. It's considered that the scheme, whilst high density, represents sufficient use of a brownfield site, provide a mix of communal and private amenity space for residents, as I've already mentioned. Whilst a small number of the units don't fully comply with the nationally described space ban standards, some units do not fully comply with recommended guidelines in terms of amenity scheme is nevertheless considered to be acceptable given its context. The scheme incorporates 17 parking spaces and 156 secure cycle parking spaces, which we think in this location is acceptable. In terms of contributions, the development provides a policy compliance suite of contributions towards affordable housing, full education contribution towards the provision of primary and secondary school places, spatial green infrastructure and outdoor sports provision. In carrying out the weighted balancing exercise of paragraph 11 in the MPPF, it's considered that the benefits of the scheme significantly outweigh the adverse impacts. And so it's recommended for approval subject to a section 106 application. Um, there's just a couple um, of additional slides there that shows the internal, uh, internal courtyard. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Uh, there's one speaker to this application, um, Connor Vellali. Mr. Vellali, are you on the call? I am, Chair. Yeah, and, and you'll have three minutes to uh, speak. And um, if you do run over that time, I'll just politely request that you wrap up your remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members. My name is Connor Vellali from Alveston Young. I'm the planning agent for the application. As members will be aware, this highly sustainable Brownfield site is identified as a key opportunity for residential redevelopment in the draft Civic Quarter Area Action Plan, also referred to as the AAP. This document is gaining increasing weight in planning decisions as it progresses to formal examination. The principle of development fully accords with the development plan and the emerging AAP, which identifies a site within the Eastern neighborhood. The council's objective for the Eastern neighborhood is for high quality residential led development. And this scheme delivers that in tandem with the refurbishment of the Victorian Villa, a key heritage benefit. The proposals also accord with the AAP's broader objectives, including specific guidance for this area in terms of building heights and achieving a high quality of design. The scheme will deliver high levels of energy efficiency and carbon emission reductions in line with council policy, sustainable drainage techniques, and seeks to capitalise on the site's excellent accessibility credentials with plentiful cycle parking. This scheme will capture a number of important benefits, not least the inclusion of 22% on-site affordable housing, as you have heard, over double the 10% policy requirements for this area, as well as significantly improving the appearance of the local area. In addition to a valuable contribution to the borough's housing supply, if members grant approval, the application will also guarantee over £400,000 towards local education and over £200,000 towards green infrastructure and outdoor sports. Members, just in terms of delivery, I'd like to note that the applicant, Investor Property Group, is an award-winning developer based in Manchester, so is local, and has an excellent track record of delivering large-scale schemes across the UK. And they have a primary focus of adding social value through urban regeneration. Investor sees Trafford as a key location for future investment and wishes to stress that it supports the Council on its wider aims and objectives to deliver regeneration and to raise living standards. Needless to say, they're extremely keen to get on and deliver the site as soon as possible. 
In summary, members, the application is wholly acceptable in planning terms, as you have heard from officers, with a considerable set of benefits. And importantly, there are no technical objections. Members, again, this will provide a further shot in the arm, along with the recent approval of the regeneration of the former Kellogg site, and further stimulate regeneration in this part of Trafford and deliver a significant number of high quality new homes on Brownfield land. I would like to thank your officers for their hard work in working with the applicant and ourselves as planning agents in achieving this very high quality scheme, which we believe will set a benchmark for design more generally within this part of the borough. We respectfully request you to uh, grant planning permission in line with the officer's recommendation. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Villani. Um, Council accordingly, I think you've indicated that you'd like to speak. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to propose. I think it's a good, uh, I think it's a good scheme. Uh, I'm not entirely comfortable with the uh, space standards, but um, actually it's quite an attractive one. And my main calculation is is really squeezing out the office to uh, resi um, um, conversions that have been taking a place in that area. I mean, this is light years ahead of those. And I think in common with the one uh, up at um, uh, Seymour Grove, I, th I think that th this is a really attractive uh, development. So fully support, um, happy to propose. Um, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cordon. Uh, Councillor Akinola. Um, I welcome the use of um, brown site and um, it is better accommodation than a lot that have been done around there recently on Seymour Grove and on Talbot Road where they've converted offices. Um, I am disappointed that there isn't, although I welcome the fact that there's 22% affordable homes, um, but I'm not happy about the fact that there isn't any social rented housing because there is a desperate need in Old Trafford for that. So I'm a bit disappointed. And I'm also concerned about there only being 17 car parking spaces. I know it would love to discourage car use, but I don't think it necessarily will that there isn't car parking space make people use their bikes, even though there's so many bikes parking spaces. So I'm a bit concerned about um, the overspill of parking. Um, going further up to Seymour Grove because there isn't any park in there and back onto the estates around there. Um, but other than that, um, we need housing um, up here. I just wish it was more affordable and social. Thank you, Councillor. And um, Councillor Minnis. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've got so I, I'm really, I like I like the fact that it's a brownfield site. I've got a question though, um, and that is about the heights of the two buildings, the two well sort of sets of buildings. Are they um, similar to what the buildings that are going to get demolished are, um, or are they any higher? That's that's just all my question is. Thank you. Um, um, through you, yeah, sorry, through you, Chairman. Yeah. Um, no, um, as I've indicated, the heights are, are significantly different to the existing buildings on site. The, the building at the back of the site rises to 13 storeys. I mean, it's massively higher than the existing buildings. Um, but because, because uh, it's, it's next to Oakland House and, and because we feel, we feel it conforms with the emerging master plan, um, the AAP, as Mr. Lilly pointed out, we feel this area is one that can accommodate tall buildings, uh, and particularly on this, this, in this particular part of Talbot Road. I mean, it is at a point uh, which the AAP identifies where we're looking to to, to, to drop heights as it got, as you as you as you get closer to the the set of Victorian villas that you see at that top end of Talbot Road. But I mean, to answer your question in a nutshell, yeah, they're, they're very different in height. Yeah, is the the shorter one? Um, how much higher is it than the building it's going to demolish? And I, I realise a really tall one is very very tall. Um, it's the it's the shorter one that I'm, I'm just. How much taller is it? Sorry. Um, just bear with me. Just let me double check the height of the. Um, yeah, the one that's the closer one to the, the building. Site, I think three, three stories, um, and the proposed building is is six stories, um, at the front of the site. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Um, Councillor Dr. Buckley. 
Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, I really like the scheme. It's kind of grown on me the more I've learned about it, the more I've seen it. Uh, I think it, it's a really nice scheme. I think it's great that it's replacing uh, office space, which um, is, is a good, good use um, of it. Uh, I also really, really like the design. I think the brickwork's nice and the recessing for the veranda, for the balconies is good. It's a really, really lovely um, development. And um, also really pleased that obviously it's so close to the Metrolink, so it's kind of sustainable in terms of travel, travel links. So, and the affordable housing contribution is also very pleasing. So I'm just really happy to support this application. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Jerome, I think you indicated you had a question. Actually, I think I've got a, a quick question for David Pearson. In the energy budget statement, they've shortlisted four uh, possible areas in which they could reduce their carbon budget by 5%, which I think is a requirement. I just wondered, it, do they can they pick any one of those, and is it something they have to then prove to the council that it meets that requirement, or do they pick more than one? And how does that work? Through you, chair, they they need to submit a scheme. That's what the uh, the condition I think condition twenty seven, yes, condition twenty seven. So it's the final condition here. Report requires them to submit a strategy. So really, it's down to them to come forward with a, a series of options. Uh, and we'll then assess that, of course. So um, that, that's the work. It would be nice if they could go beyond the, the sort of building regulation requirements set out in the core strategy, but that may be the case. I don't know, that, but that's all we can pose, we feel, at the moment. But it could be a range of options, which um, I think the report highlights. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Bigby. Well, thanks very much indeed, Chair. You know, it's a very attractive um, design. I, I thoroughly appreciate it. But there are issues, um, Councillor accordingly mentioned the separation. Um, in the report, it clearly says that uh, there are distances which don't conform. There are apartments which will be um, not conform regarding sunlight, daylight, and they'll be potentially overlooking. Um, but May I come on to the car parking, which has been mentioned by colleagues? You know, there should be 221 places, but there's, well, 17. Um, I know there's, um, it's been said that it will deter people from needing a car or wanting a car, but that's, that's a big wish. You know, the three places for people with mobility problems. Well, there could be more than three people with mobility problems in a, in a place that size. But it's not only residents who live in any apartment block who may need require parking places. It's visitors, it's doctors, it's engineers who visit the premises. You know, any, on any day, there's going to be doctors visiting the premises or engineers or service engineers visiting. I know in Manchester, our friends who live in Manchester in large in apartments where there's no parking. But in Manchester, there are adequate pay car parks where you can park, leave your car. This location, there's none. There's no pay off-road, there's no on-road parking. So I do think, I don't sit easy with it. I, I, I honestly don't, but um, I'll listen to what members think. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Proctor. Yeah, be, be quick. Very much echo what uh, Councillor Rupert just said, actually. I, I, I think it's a very attractive scheme. I like the design. Um, you know, I could see it be a very good good place to live. And the affordable housing uh, proportion percentage is, is, is good. Um, my two concerns, like Councillor Rigby, is the car parking spaces. Now, that's mitigated to some degree by the good public transport in that location but there are you know issues with that um which i think um, does does concern me quite a bit and the other issue of that he also mentioned is the distance distance between the two blocks i think there's going to be a degree of overlooking there and i think that is picked up in the in the report so that that, that worries me a little bit but i think overall i will will vote for the scheme but with with those couple of concerns at the back of my mind, and hopefully someone will be able to reassure me on, on, on those. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Morgan. 
Thank you, Chair. I'm going to um, echo Councillor Rigby, and Councillor Proctor, and um, what and brief comment Councillor Akinola mentioned. Um, I, 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 no scheme is perfect, and there are things about this scheme I prefer uh, that I like and I don't like. Um, but I would mostly in balance. I would. I, I actually read it and was really, really in favour. And then I looked at the the car parking allocation, and I just thought this is. Mm. Ridiculous. Um, I have to be honest. I like. like I, I understand that there's 221, which is the maximum, um, and I, I wouldn't. Have, I would have been highly surprised if I'd seen 221 parking spaces. And, and I know it's great public transport, but this is not a city centre location. I mean, there's, there's paragraph 182 that the lack of available on um, street parking, and this will encourage lower levels of car parking ownership, probably to an extent. But do I think that that it would will make people go? You know what? I've got a car. I'm going to sell this car because I'm renting this flat for for a temp. No, it won't. And I, I really have got real concerns about this. This is going to cause people will park a decent distance because they will have a car. And I, I really have to say this really does concern me. This and I really would like some rec, um, reassurance from officers about this because I, I think I, and. Just assuming that saying 31% of residents don't own a car, well, by my calculation, 31% don't own, that comes to about 140 car parking spaces we should be having. And Councillor Rigby's right. The allocation for, for people who've got mobility issues or other disabilities, um, the, there's the workmen, police officers, you know, you know, a flat this size will have a, a relative amount of trade. And it really does concern me. Uh, this um I, at the moment I, I i'm probably recommend i'm i'm unlikely to support this on this on this basis the only thing but i do think that 17 car parking spaces is is not enough for a, 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 a location which is miles outside the city center thank you thank you councillor and councillor hartley thank you chair um i i actually have a number of reservations about about the application um I'm, I'm not sure they are enough to uh, to mean the adverse impacts significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits. But um, but I do have a number of concerns. You know, it is it is a, an attractive building. The appearance uh, is good, um, so it so it so it looks good. But I, 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 the more I read in the report, the more sort of concerns I had really about the amenity of of the of the living space. Um, the civic quarter. Area action plan is is referred to, and, and the report says that now it's at the regular regulation nineteen stage. It uh, it should be given considerable weight, and uh, is considered to be um, a determinative document in in determining the application. and 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 this application fails to comply with a lot of what is in the area action plan. To be honest, um, it, it fails to comply on on the building height. Um, although I appreciate it's on the Sort of on the border of the next zone where higher buildings uh, are, are tolerated. Um, paragraph 15 in the report sort of um, sums up what, what's um, what's set out in the in the area action plan and what residential development should should seek to achieve. So it talks about amenity space, which um, you know should have playable services, play sculptures, playable hard landscape features. The, the amenity space doesn't doesn't look that good from what I can see. Um, Councillor Corden referred to the national space standards, and the and the AAP says that that all units must all units must meet or exceed the national space standards, and and um, twenty of twenty of the apartments don't. Um, it, it's a very high density building, and uh, you know I sort of think they they could reduce the density. Have a few less flats, and and then the flats probably all would meet the national uh, minimum space standards. Um, the air action plan says uh, there should be um, more than fifty percent of the apartments should be dual aspect. The majority of the flats in this in this development are single aspect. Um, the air action plan says should avoid north facing single aspect units, and they should only be permitted for non-family dwellings and in exceptional circumstances. There's no exceptional circumstances identified in this application or in the report that I can see. And 27% of the apartments have a sole northern aspect. Um, and it looks like some of those could be used for, um, for family accommodation. Because when you look at the, the plans for each floor, um, 
certainly in block B, there's a number of one bed flats which have a, a northern aspect only um, on, on, on all the floors, I think. There's also a two bed flat and most, on most of the floors in the northeast corner. Um, and it looks like that has a solely northern aspect um, as well. I know there, are, there aren't many windows in the eastern elevation of that block. I think that's the problem. There are some, but it looks like they are windows for stairwells, possibly bathrooms, which would be um, obscured glazed. There's a similar problem in, in, in block A as well, to be honest, I won't, I won't go through it. But again, there's a number of apartments in there that have a sole um, northern, northern aspect. And the BRE guidance is referred to in the, in the report, um, which says that uh, you know, those apartments with a sole northern, northwest, northeastern aspect should be minimized um, unless there's appealing view to the north. Well, the view to the north is, is the back of, of, of White City Retail Park. So, um, so the, the, this, I just have a number of, of concerns. I'll try not to repeat what other members have said. Parking has been, has been talked about. Uh, the sunlight daylight hours has been talked about. I, you know, I went through the assessments for that in, in detail and you know, there's a number of windows or rooms that fail to meet um, those targets. I know, I know that they are only targets and the BRE guidance isn't a planning policy document. Um, and the report, um, the report makes clear that the, um, the, the national planning policy says there is a, there is a degree of, uh, of flexibility needed there, which, you know, which I would agree with, particularly for high density, uh, higher rise developments like this, but the, the, the planning, national poli planning policy framework does say that there still needs to be acceptable living standards. And, and my, my concern here is, is, that, is that there isn't. Uh, the amenity space I've mentioned, I think it's inadequate in terms of the, the size uh, and the quality of it. Um, the, I know the landscaping matters are reserved, but I think the space on the site probably can't accommodate the specific green infrastructure that's um that's required by spd1 and uh r5.4 in the in the core strategy so uh, though, i know there's a number of concerns about it and i think you, you know when when we get to the conclusion there aren't many adverse impacts listed uh and i don't think that's right i think there are a number of other adverse impacts um which I've, you know, which I've tried to refer to. So the real question for me is whether those adverse impacts um, significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits, which, which I accept are weighty. I accept the benefits and the, the need, you know, the, the, the contribution it makes to the housing need, the affordable housing allowance, uh, you know, it's a brownfield site already developed. They're all really weighty factors. So, I, you know, I think it's quite finely balanced, to be honest, when you weigh up all of the adverse impacts that I can find against uh, against those benefits. But um, I'll, I'll wait and see what other members say um, before uh, before I decide which sort of which side of that balance uh, I think we should fall. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. I would just reflect that. I think you've articulated a number of my concerns and I'm, in fact I was quite surprised really at the level of enthusiasm for this application that uh, other members have expressed. Um, I think what it's exposed to me is that, you know, well produced and attractive looking um, visual images can, can really prove powerful in swaying a, a person's view about an application because when you go into the fine details contained in the committee report, there are a number of things that I found concerning. Members will know that a few weeks ago, we absolutely ripped apart an application on the basis that the, the, the space standard in a number of the units was, was not adequate. And yet here we, we've got an application where 20 um, flats are below um, what are nationally uh, defined space standards. In addition to that, uh, members will be familiar with the fact that I don't like it when applica applications come forward which only propose um, a, a minimal amount of shared uh, of, uh, affordable housing provision. And I appreciate it has increased from uh, the applicant's starting place, but I also don't appreciate it when we only see shared ownership because if you can't afford to buy in Trafford, oftentimes you won't be able to, uh, to afford to buy the shared ownership component of um, of a, of a rented owned uh, property. 
Um, I think in addition to that, you know, this is part of Trafford that is rapidly changing. Uh, hitherto now, it hasn't really had much in the way of residential accommodation. And I think we've had a number of very big applications come to committee recently, which when they come forward to development stage, have the capacity to really change the feel for this part of the borough. Uh, as Mr. Pearson's pointed out, you know, this the, the height of one of the blocks is significantly different to the existing unit. And I do wonder whether or not the site can fully accommodate it or, or, and quite how, when it comes uh, to being built, it will change the feel of this part of the borough. I, I think uh, Councillor Hartley has pointed to the fact that it's a fine balance and I couldn't agree more. There are some welcome aspects to the application. I mean, we've just had, I was uh, listening to the uh, conversation previously uh, on the prior applications about educational contribution. It's welcome that there's a full educational contribution uh, in this application uh, to this application but as others have pointed out the blocks are very close it's a dense use uh, of this plot so it, it's an interesting conversation uh, we're having now um now council Kerry's also indicated that he'd like to speak so we'll call him thank you Council. thank you chairman um i will be supporting the um application according to the officer's recommendations i think the report's really good I understand the point you've just been made. I thought they were really interesting, you and uh, Councillor um, Hartley. Um, my biggest thing was parking at first. I was like, oh my God, 17 spaces when it should have 221. And then I thought, well, these 17 spaces, you know, is who's going to have them? Can somebody buy one? Can somebody rent them? Are they free for all? Uh, visitors and then I thought, well, maybe could we put a condition on that? I don't know. And then when I read um, paragraph uh, 181, it does explicitly state that the prospective residential occupiers, whether that be purchase or renters, will be told and be made aware explicitly um, about this um, private ownership. And I kind of think, you know, we are trying to encourage more people to use public transport. It is right near the Metrolink. It has got lots of side provision. Maybe we give it a go and let the market decide um, if this is going to work. Um, just something I thought about. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Mr Pearson, I think uh, you were going to come in and clarify and respond to some of the comments. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, just trying to respond to a number of the points that have been raised. Obviously, uh, se several points. I think the first one that seemed to come up was parking. Um, I mean, obviously, more generally, um, members are aware of the, the sort of um, you know, the aspirations in the AAP, envisioning AAP. Um, but this is, a, it is a very sustainable location. You know, it's, it's a very short tram ride from Manchester city centre. I guess it's almost walkable from city centre. Um, we are trying to encourage developers to, to look at other means of transport than the, than the private car. Um, so that's one consideration. Um, the the other um, is that you know if you if you do provide a, a lower number of parking spaces, well then what harm might result? Now the harm that often results in development schemes is that you get on street parking outside other established residential areas. Now in our view, this site was sufficiently distant from any other established residential areas that I, I can't imagine anybody wanting to live here. Is likely to want uh, to park their car overnight, for example, outside the nearest residential street that, that's not got a residence only parking uh, scheme on it. That, that's quite some distance away. Um, I mean, concerns I think expressed as well, perhaps about emergency vehicle access. I mean, there are always places where emergency vehicles can park if they need to attend a site, even within a site layout. Um, so that's the sort of parking issue. Um, Various comments uh, raised really in relation to, I think, the general issue of amenity. Um, one was the separation distances between the buildings. I mean, yeah, absolutely, they, it is tight. And yet again, in the, in the emerging AAP and in the emerging traffic design guide, for this type of development in this type of area where you're going to get high density developments, uh, the separation distances that we're used to looking at in, in SPD or P, uh, PG1, New Residential Development, for example, are, are not really going to apply in areas like this. 
Um, and the thinking seems to be that people who are likely to want to buy into this sort of development are going to be prepared to, to compromise on issues like that. So yes, they are going to be overlooked if they don't choose to install a blind at their window, you know, with the lights on in the evening. But um, that's that's one of the what one of the aspects of living in this this kind of development. Um, I mean, in in terms of amenity, talk was mention was made of the uh, the nationally described space standards. Now, I mean, the report sets out that actually 86% of the units do comply with those space standards. Now, um, the council hasn't adopted those space standards yet, so, and I think Councillor Hartley mentioned that. Well, the AAP. Um, I suggest that all, all developments should should can comply with those. And, and once the AAP is adopted and that becomes the development plan for this part of the borough, then that will be kept the case. That will be a, a development plan requirement. But at the moment it's not. And given how short the or how close the scheme has been there's just there, there are 20 of the two bed units that are short. They fall only between two and six square meters short. So again, on balance, because we've not got adopted standards, we felt that that was acceptable. I know um, uh, mention was made of the uh, a comparison between this scheme and one or two of the other schemes that we've seen, and I think committee refused lately. Um, th this scheme is, in, in terms of its general level of amenity, we think is far, far, far better than, than those schemes. Um, also on the, the general issue of amenity, um, the AAP, again, it talks about trying to avoid north facing apartments that have solely north facing aspects. Now, fully acknowledge that this is one, as one aspect of this scheme where it really does fall short. Um, and yet we've got, we've got a, a sort of a length of Talbot Road where the building lines are est already established really. Um, and they are they generally buildings are on top of the road they have a north south aspect and and that's kind of unavoidable if you want a building to front the street which is appropriate in street scene terms then on this road you can't help but have a north facing aspect so um yes a lot of the the units do have a north facing aspect but those that are that rise above the general level of the uh of buildings in the area will at least have a distant view um so again, on, on balance, we felt that that was probably acceptable. Um, mention was made of sunlight and daylight impact uh, as well. And yes, again, we, you know, it's not fully compliant. Most schemes are, are, are rarely fully compliant. But again, we feel this is this just about hit the balance. Um, and again, they, it is mentioned, I think, in the report that the BRE guidelines weren't written for, for developments like this. They're Sort of much smaller scale suburban development. So I, ho I hope I've covered uh, most of the points that, that members raised there. And um, I, I would just conclude that on balance, yeah, not everything's perfect. It, it never is. But, but when you throw everything into the mix and the design quality, we, we thought this was overall, you know, the benefits of the scheme outweighed the, the, the adverse impact. So that's why we've made the recommendation that we have and, and we do believe it should look um it, it should look at, look, look like a good quality development and will offer a decent level of amenity for for residents thank you chairman thank you mr pearson um as i have noted it um the application has been proposed to be accepted by council accordingly but no other um uh, no other member has seconded as far as i can tell are there any other members Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, as it's now been composed and seconded that we uh, approve the application, I think in the interest of time, we'll, we'll move to the vote and I'll ask members uh, as you appear on my screen. Um, Councillor Bigby. Yes, on a very fine balance, Chairman, I'll support. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Jerome. Um, I'll, I'll support. It's a recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hartley. Sorry, Chair. Um, I, I, can't, I can't support it. I don't think I've got I've got too many reservations about it. I suspect um, other members are in favour, but uh, I'm, I'm going to vote against the officer recommendation. 
Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Minnis. Um, I've, got, I've got too many reservations. I think I'm going to have to go um, against. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Proctor. Uh, yeah, I have some reservations, but I will accept the officer's recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor accordingly. You came, you came on me much quicker than Councillor Hartley. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm accepting the um, application, um, accept the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Akinola. Um, oh, I'd like to accept it, but do you know what? I'm sick of so many flats and not enough houses and not enough social housing. And um, it just feels like a big project that's been developed to make money. So, no, I don't support it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Morgan. Um, against officer recommendations, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dr. Bartley. Thank you, Chairman. I did ask to speak before you went to the vote. I just want to make a very brief comment and to say that um, you did say that perhaps we were swayed or particular members of the committee were swayed by good CGI, computer generated images. I'd like to say from my personal point of view, that was not the case at all. I just thought on balance, it was a good scheme and an attractive scheme. And therefore, I support officer recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Acton. I support the recommendations, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Carey. I uh, support the application. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I will be voting against officer recommendation. So I make it that five votes against to seven votes in favour. So the application is approved. Um, the next application for consideration is Wheat Cheap Hotel is on page one of the committee report. Um, it will be introduced by Ms Coley, I believe. Thank you, Chairman. If you just bear with me while I... Um... Share my screen. One second. Okay, uh, is everybody able to see that? Yeah, okay. Yes, thank yeah, thank you. Um, this, this application relates to the Wheat Sheaf Hotel, which is on the A56 on the northern approach to um, Altrincham Town Centre. What's on the corner of Church Street to the west, um, which is which is the A56 Knollfield Road uh, to the north, uh, and there are, is bound by Edwardian and Victorian dwellings. Um, and there's some open grassed areas here, um, and then the, the uh, Georgian Dragon Hotel is on the opposite side of um, of Church Street. And then beyond that, there's a uh, just off the top of this plan here is a um, very listed uh, Regency on Sunday. Road. The site's within the Sandyway Conservation Area, which, which is centred around that terrace. Um, and the building is noted in the, in the Conservation Area appraisal as, as both a positive contributor and a landmark building. Uh, there's another conservation area in the in the vicinity, Old Marketplace Conservation Area, and the boundary runs there along that, that rear wall. Um, this is the existing site plan here. You can see um, you can see the, the building and the um, the numerous additions and, and, and alterations, the cobbled area that's probably familiar to, to anybody who's driven past the site, it is very prominent on the on the road, it is, is here at the front with Oldfield Road going up to John Lee, Lee Park at the back. Um, unfortunately, the plans are, are, are quite small to, to show on, on the screen, um, but the, these are the these are the existing elevations. Um, uh, and then we have the um, ground ground floor and site plan here. So the applicant proposes to redevelop the site to provide six dwellings through uh, the conversion of the most important prominent original elements to the front of the plot, together with the demolition of single storey elements to the rear, of the detached garage uh, along the plot's northwest boundary. Um, these, these elements at the rear are to be replaced by a combination of single storey and two storey rear extensions 
the new car port in Linstock. So if I go on to the next slide, well, you can see that this isn't particularly, again, the, the drawings have got a lot of detail on them which don't transfer well to the, to the slideshow. So I've split this particular site plan up into two um, and also um, rotated it so that you look effectively looking at the front of the building back. So this, so what you'll see here is, is the rear part of the site. And you can see the, the red dotted line there is, um, is a, uh, is, is the, uh, a line of demolition. You can see a unit here, which is number six. You can see garden areas here, which are, which uh, exist at the moment were converted to be used by them. Then you've got um, bin store there, car parking, further car parking, cycle store, courtyard, uh, and then uh, further accommodation here. Uh, so if I go down to the next slide, that will start to make some more sense. Effectively, this this overlaps and continues that down. So you've got the remainder of the uh, communal areas, the front, the front parts, the front parts of the building here, you can see the demolition quite clearly there. There's a coach coach access, which you'll see on the elevations there, and then the court, the cobbled courtyard area, sorry, not courtyard area, frontage area at, at that point. So the proposed front elevation, as you can see, uh, retains the uh, historic elements of, of the building uh, in, in situ and, and simply converts the space behind them. The real elevation you see there, uh, there are se uh, several extensions in order to accommodate uh, residential accommodation. And again, these, these side elevations, you've got the um, Mount, Mount Street property up there that you can see that relationship. And then the building at the front, frontage there, and then the extensions in this part. Again, you can see this with the courtyard. And then in the courtyard, there's this single storey um, unit one bedroom dwelling there and the carports. Um, isn't that blank? Right, for some reason, the remainder of the slides seem to have disappeared. So if you just bear with me while I try and try and get those back. Right, uh, if you just bear with me, they, they should work again. Okay, so you can see the, the in here that that's showing the area in there. Um, and then you've got the carports. Uh, so that's that part there. And then the carport bin store there and the front elevation of the car cycle store, which is just there. Um, that's a lower ground floor plan showing that there's some accommodation in the basement with light wells the first floor and then the roof plan. The section plans, which we've seen before, and then there's just a couple of CGI's to seek to model the building. Um, this application has been reported to committee because had seven letters of objection which have been contrary to the officer recommendation. Key issues here are the principle of residential development, heritage design and residential amenity impacts. Um, the principle of residential development of the site is considered to be acceptable. Um, it would be acceptably designed and, and uh, amenity impacts have been carefully considered and are deemed to be acceptable. No highway concerns. Um, the heritage officer has been consulted on the application has worked hard with the case officer and with the applicant to to get to a scheme that 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 um, she's happy she's happy with um she does identify that there would be um, moderate harm to the heritage asset as a result of the proposals with this scale of intervention uh, but nonetheless it's considered that that the ability to bring this this important landmark building back into a viable permanent viable use uh, whilst retaining its most important features are, uh, is is uh, something which does outweigh uh, that that moderate harm um, deemed less than substantial in MPPF terms. Um, and additionally, there would be, of course, the contribution to the borough's housing land supply. 
uh, no harm incidentally has been identified to the setting of the uh, grade two listed terrace to the northeast. Consequently, the application is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Coley. Um, there's one speaker to this application uh, speaking against it, I believe. Um, is Ross Mervis on the call? Hello, can you hear me? Um, yep, is it Ms. Yeah, Mervis? It's Dominique Mervis, Ross's wife. Right. Oh, that's fine. Um, you've got three minutes to speak, uh, Mrs. Mervis. And if you do run over time, I'll just politely ask that you uh, wrap up your remarks. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, I'm a resident of To The Grove and um, thank you for allowing me to speak today. Overall, we are in support of the development. However, we would like to raise several concerns. Number one, plans to demolish and replace the existing garage block. The documents detailing the exact plans for the existing garage blocks were only submitted for us to view yesterday and after the planning officer's report was written. It is worth noting that several revised plans have been submitted after the planning officer's report has been written. The proposed height of the ridge of the carport is lower than the existing garage block and the carport block is shorter at the south side being replaced with a bike shed at a lower level. Both of these changes would affect our privacy. No provision has been made to fill this gap with screening such as a fence at the same height as the existing garage block. We are also concerned about the proposed demolition of the garages. Due to height differences between the proposed development and our property, the removal of the back wall and supporting buttress walls should be assessed by a structural engineer prior to removal, as there is a potential risk of collapse of pathways of to the grove and our property itself. An insurance policy should be taken out by the builder in case of damage to our property due to subsidence and a copy of this lodged with us. Number two, the planting of 18 trees on the site. The planning officer's report, paragraph 89, states that 18 trees should be planted, three for each dwelling. There is limited garden space, a large portion of which is the communal garden neighboring our patio, where there are currently no high trees or shrubs. The original landscaping master plan, dated the 7th of February, 2020, appeared to only show two significant feature trees in the communal garden. We are concerned that the 18 trees will be overly concentrated along our boundary and lead to a significant reduction in light to our patio area. Such intense tree planting would also risk impacting the surrounding foundations and drains. Number three, the proposal to no longer use obscured glazing in the window of bedroom four of dwelling five. We object to this proposal. All other facing windows at this level, including another bedroom and living room, use obscured glazing. We have no issue with the proposed new window for dwelling two, bedroom two. And finally, the refuse store. We remain opposed to the placement of the refuse store. The planning statement report itself cites Trafford Core Strategy Policy L7 on page 21, which we understand protects existing neighbors and states Development must be compatible with the surrounding area and not prejudice the amenity of the occupants of adjacent properties by noise or particularly in this case odour in any other way. There appear to be viable alternative sites, including swapping car parking spaces one and two, a portion of the garage area in dwelling five, or to the entrance of the development, which would also make bin collection easier. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mervis. Um, Councillor Cordenly, I think you've indicated you'd be happy to open the discussion. Um, yeah, um, I'm happy to propose um, acceptance of the uh, application, although I do think uh, some of the issues raised by the uh, speaker are worthy of uh, addressing. My understanding is some of the questions over structural stability and um, need to be um, they're not they're out out with the uh, planning application um i'd be very disturbed if i was granting something that would bring um that it would cause financial liability but so i think we need to make sure where the planning application go um the boundaries of the planning application there is some question over shared walls and things like that and i do agree uh, they need to be addressed uh, but otherwise um, 
the application is to a listed building that has fallen into real disrepute over the years. Uh, it's not going to come back as a pub. Um, it's not. Um, it's not in a sustainable place for a pub anymore. Uh, Altrincham Town Centre has moved. So I think that my main concern is that this actually preserves that what is an absolutely uh, important feature of the uh, main road in Altrincham. And uh, on that basis, I propose it. But I do have concerns over uh, shared walls and things like that over the uh, carports. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Uh, was myself trying to check the additional information report as Mrs. Mervis was speaking, because I think she did raise a number of questions that perhaps after we've heard from another couple of speakers, Ms. Colley might be in a position to respond to. Um, uh, Councillor Jerome, you've also indicated you'd like to ask a question. Uh, not a question, but I would like to speak, if that's okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'm also um, inclined to support this uh, uh, application too. And the heritage development officer, I think, has been quite quite clear, and I think he, he has got it right. The works will result in moderate harm to the significance of the wheat sheaf and its context. However, the conversion and the reuse of this vacant and deteriorating landmark building is welcomed, and I, I would agree with that. I mean, this is a, an important landmark in an important conservation and heritage area for Altrincham. We cannot take this application lightly. However, this building has sadly fallen into dereliction uh, over the last few years, and it, it, it's not viable as a pub. We know we've got the Georgian Dragon nearby and the Old Market Tavern, as well as a number of, of, of other pubs in, in Altrincham Town Centre. So I, I don't think it is viable as a pub anymore, which is very sad, um, but a, a fact, I believe. I would like to also thank the officers for the work they've done on this application. I, I believe they've worked hard with the applicant to retain the key heritage features and have a consistent design and treatment of materials to be consistent with the surrounding kind of conservation area. Um, this change of use will contribute to much needed housing as well in, in, a, in a sustainable location. Um, issues raised in objections, though difficult, I, I do think the report has dealt with these. I, I sympathise with the neighbours regard the bin store and I'm just wondering whether uh, Miss Coley could could look at the bin stores and see if they could be moved to a better location. I'm wondering if this is quite a small issue, really, and can be dealt with, um, which I think would be helpful. Um, and I, but I think also, you know, with the bin store, if, if residents do use the bins correctly um, and and properly and and work within the council rules, then the bin store isn't actually as big as a problem. Uh, as you would like to think, and, and not one that we can really reject an application on. But if we if we can move them, that would be fantastic. I think the boundary wall insurance matter is a legal matter, and I hope that does get sorted. And I think in the additional information report, the 18 trees has been downscaled to 10 trees, um, as I think the council does recognise that 18 trees it is too big for, for the plot we're talking about. Um, but... Um, I'm also going to um, support uh, Council Accordingly's proposal, so I'm happy to second that on this application and, and think overall the officers have done a good job uh, and this will be a, a, a massive improvement to what's currently situated on site. So thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Morgan, you, you have asked if you can submit a question. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, I'm broadly really supportive of this and agree with everything that Councillor Jerome's just said. Um, I've just got two questions that I think are really, quite, hopefully, really simple ones. First, there was something in the report about the flammability of zinc. I haven't got a clue about this. I do remember zinc from science experiments, but um, just um, I think it's on one of the roofs. Um, just if one of the officers could just confirm on that, that there isn't any flammability risk. Um, and then just on highways, um, I think this is coming out onto the main road from what I can gather. I have to be honest, I struggled with some of the um, diagrams of this. Um, and just, I just, if Mr. Pearson could just confirm in terms of highway safety and sustainability, it's a pretty busy road, particularly at um, peak times. Um, so that's just my two questions. Thank you. Would you like me to take those now, Chairman? Yeah, okay. Um, so in terms of the highways, um, the uh, it, the access 
Um, I mean, I can share the plan, plan again if it, would, if it would be helpful. To, in fact, I will do because I, I don't think I can describe <laughs> describe it effectively unless I do. Um, so if you just bear with me while that, while that loads up. Um, right. Can you, are you seeing the same as I am there? Side elevation one or two CGI. Just shout up if you are. Um, I am, yeah. You are. Can you see the underpass where my cursor is? Yeah. That's 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 the um that's the access so it so you wouldn't come straight out onto the main road there you would come out onto oldfield road right it's 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 set back from the main i mean i suppose well you could but uh, from my own knowledge of the site you'd have a pretty big curb to bump down um and so it's, so it's kind of just quickly then because oldfield itself do you have to mean at peak times can be pretty yeah. busy so let's say someone wants to go drive into town do you have to mean at the middle of the day yeah. not the middle of the day at peak hours do you have to mean yeah. like outside of covid if who, who knows where the real world will be but let's let's pretend it goes back to where we are um it's pretty difficult i'm just i'm just thinking in my head you're not going to get some people trying to be ridiculous and then similarly people turning on to Oldfield Road from um, a highway secure safety aspect well I mean the highway authority have not have not objected to, the, to, to this and if I don't answer this uh, satisfactorily then, then I might bring might bring Jeff in but I think that for, for this you can't take it from a null position it was it was a pub it might not have been a pub for a while but it could become a pub again tomorrow so, so it has to bear in mind the level of traffic that you would get from, from a pub, and this use would be much less than that. The other thing, of course, is that it's, it's a historic building. So you might, if you were, if you were, if you were looking at the site uh, anew, demolish everything and put an access in off Oldfield Road. That would, that would make some sense if you had a clear site, but you don't have that. And the benefits of retaining those front parts of the building particularly when you've got a fallback position of, of, of a pub use, um, I think would outweigh any concerns about uh, manoeuvres, which have no doubt taken place um, over, over many years. Cool. I, I appreciate that and accept that. Thank you. Um, you had another question, which in all the excitement, I've forgotten completely. So if you, if you can remind me of it, I'll answer it. There was a comment about zinc. There was a, there was a comment about zinc on some of the roofs and it was flammable. Oh, I can't remember yeah. being answered. Um, but I might have missed it being answered. No, I didn't. I'd forgotten. I'd for, I'd forgotten that. I remembered you'd asked a question, but not the detail. Um, zinc is a relatively common um, roofing material for contemporary buildings and is used in a number of uh, houses and apartment schemes um, in the south of the borough. Um, and there has never been any any issues. Obviously, if it's not properly insulated, then but but that would be an issue with the with it what was behind it as opposed to the material itself. Could I, could I just ask, is, is there any scope for moving the bin store within this scheme? Sorry, I couldn't get myself off mute there. Um, we've asked that question a number of times, Councillor, and the answer is no. Um, the uh, it, it would require completely reorganising the the rear accommodation and, and, and wouldn't work for the scheme. Officers have considered carefully the position of the bin store. It's not uncommon to have this kind of relationship on, apart, uh, on apartments or, or schemes like this with, with neighbouring properties. And uh, they don't usually cause any issues. We have to assume that they will be used responsibly. Thank you. Um, the application has been proposed and seconded now. Um, no other members have indicated in the chat that they're looking to speak is, is there, if anybody does want to make a further contribution if you just perhaps do so now or otherwise I, I think we're in a position to move to the vote really and as it's been proposed and seconded i think if we, if we proceed straight to vote then and um, councillor rigby yes support the officer's recommendation chair thank you councillor councillor jerome i also support officer's recommendation to grant Thank you, Councillor Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair. Thank support you, the officer's recommendation, recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Minnis. Um, I'll support, I'll support the, officer's the officer's recommendation. recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Akinola. I support the recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Cox. Support officer recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor Cox. 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 Th
Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Carey. Uh, I support, uh, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dr. Barclay. Thank you, Chairman. I support the officer's recommendation to grant. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dr. Uh, Councillor Morgan. Support officer recommendation to grant, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cordingly. Support officer's recommendation to grant, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Vatton. Hmm. Councillor Vatton, are you still on the call? Who, who, did oh. you say me? Yes, yes. Can, yourself, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm for the application. Thank you, Councillor. And uh, I, I will also be voting uh, in line with Officer recommendation to grant um, that application is approved. Um, the next application for consideration is uh, Gulmarg on Garden Lane, which is page 256 of the committee report um, and will be introduced by Ms. Coley, I understand. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just bear with me while I sh share my screen. If you just bear with me, um, my introduction first. Spanish, my screen. Give you one second. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Um, this application uh, is being reported to the planning committee as it's been called in by Councillor Welton. It has also uh, received a further nine letters of objection from local residents. All the representations are summarised in the officer's report and in the additional information report and generally relate to the key issues of design, impact on residential amenity, impact on the conservation area and highway safety. The application site is currently occupied by a detached bungalow with small garden areas uh, sited to the north and south of the building. The western boundary of the site with Garden Lane is formed by a mix of brick walling, fencing and the rendered side wall of the property. The bung bungalow is vacant and dilapidated. The garden area is overgrown with areas of hard standing. Springfield, a detached dormer bungalow and a parking area used by nearby offices are located to the west of the site. To the north is a recent development of uh, a pair of semi-detached houses with gated access off Garden Lane. Four storey office block with associated parking is sited to the south of Goldmark. The rear gardens of properties on uh, Springfield Road lie beyond the eastern boundary. These gardens are approximately 0.9 of a metre lower than Goldmark and they slope down towards the rear of the dwellings, which are approximately two metres low in the application site. These dwellings are substantial detached and semi detached Victorian properties with three floors of above ground accommodation. The, the site is located within character area C, Church Street commercial area of the old marketplace conservation area. Planning Commission is at sort for the demolition of the existing building and erection of a two storey, three number bedroom uh, dwelling along with new replacement boundary walls and landscaping. So that's the existing dwelling as, you, as is seen on the site now. Um, that's the proposed site, site plan so you can see the new uh, the new footprint of the dwelling there, garden area and parking space. There was a, a detached garage proposed for that area of the site, which has been removed um, at the request of officers. Uh, that's a, a zoomed in version, so you can see the you can see the floor plans there. You can see a uh, ground floor plan, parking spaces, and the, the accommodation in the roof there. Um, these are the elevations. Uh, rear elevation that would be facing onto the properties on Springfield Road. That's the Garden Lane elevation that faces into the Garden South, and that uh, and that faces onto the to the garage. Sorry, not the garage, the parking area. Um, 
these are some contextual elevations showing how the um, building sits within the surrounding context. Um, in particular, I'd just like to, to uh, draw your attention to this. I mean, it's a, one of the previous reasons for refusal and significant concern has been um, expressed about the impact of this building on properties on Springfield Road. So you can see there that there is, is 22 metres between this um, rear elevation here and, and the two storey part of the uh, uh, of the properties on Springfield Road, uh, uh, albeit um, uh, one of the properties does have does, does have some single storey outriggers bit beyond there. Um, so that more than complies with our um, guidance in, in SPD1 in terms of uh, separation distances if you had a blank gable here which which you do effectively uh, and which would be somewhat taller as well so it's just useful to show that in context there again this shows this shows the sections in in, in context and then there's some there's some photographs um so i will go back to contextual elevations the previous application for a replacement dwelling on this site was refused in january 2018 Contrary to officer recommendation and three reasons relating to design, impact on neighbouring properties and highway safety. This application seeks to address those reasons for refusal by reducing the height, massing and size of the proposed property and utilising a traditional design approach. Officers consider that the previous reasons for refusal have been successfully addressed and the proposed development will result in acceptable form of development with regard to amenity of neighbouring future residents, ecology, drainage, highways, access and parking, the visual impact on the street scene and would not harm the significance of the conservation area, subject to the inclusion of the conditions you see in your report. The local highway authority have carefully considered the proposals and have raised no objection. The application is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Coley. Um, th there's a number of speakers to this uh, item. I believe two speakers against. I'm not sure if Councillor Welton and uh, Dr. Neil do discuss between them who'd like to speak first. Um, hi, it's Kerry Neild here. I'm happy to speak first, if that's helpful. Yeah, that, that's great. Thank you, Dr Neild. Um, you've got three minutes to speak, and if you do run over time, I'll just politely request that you conclude your contribution. Thank you. OK, thank you. Chair and Councillors, I live at 3 Springfield Road. We do not object to the development of the property at its existing height and scale. The neighbours welcome planning, permitted, um, planning granted in October 2019 under permitted development, which retain the character and height of the existing with minimal impact to surrounding properties and conservation area. Residents object to the current application. The site was refused planning in 2018 due to residential amenities, highways and conservation. The reasons for refusal remain with this application. The application is higher, nearly two metres higher, and wider than that refused in 2018. The site is just over the half the width of a cricket wicket or bowling alley, and the applicant wants to stack the equivalent height of two double-decker buses on top of each other in this space. The result is a three-storey property from the perspective of Springfield, which is higher than the original walls around Strangeways and three times the height of the Berlin Wall. The application is oppressive and overbearing. The applicant suggests moving the property one metre further away from the boundary and the sloping roof upsets this nearly two metres increase in height from the previous application. This is just absurd. From the straight on angle facing our homes, a nearly 10 metre high wall is still a 10 metre high wall, whether it is brick or slate roof, whether it is two or three strides away from the boundary. It is not the same as a two metre gable, which is less than five metres as suggested in the report. Gardens on Springfield already feel like being at the bottom of a bowl due to the hill. If the application were approved, this would be putting a lid on that bowl and the development would completely block the sun, we would be in total shadow. It's especially important when the garden is all my children have access to in the COVID-19 pandemic. The link between vitamin D and preventing COVID shows how important light is to the immunity of residents. Shadowing will be like that of the refused application. The height difference between the properties on Springfield and the site is the aggravating factor, as acknowledged by this committee in refusing previous applications and agreed by the planning inspectorate. The properties are closely sited as the building is on infill site of the gardens of Springfield Road. The distances to surrounding houses, habitable rooms and garden boundaries are far, far, far short of the guidelines. There is no distance for overbearing and oppression. It is a matter of judgment. The, windows has, the development has windows and major habitable rooms which allow overlooking directly line of sight into my children's bedrooms. 
The planning report acknowledges this, but the suggested mitigations would not prevent this light of side in 12 properties. Ours are family homes with small children and safeguarding must be considered. In summary, the proposed dwelling is overbearing, oppressive, visually intrusive and overshadowing. We'll be hemmed in and we'd need to turn on lights even at the height of summer. We'll be overlooked by windows, in direct line of sight into children's bedrooms. Our lives and enjoyment of our homes will be significantly affected if an application was granted. We would like the property to be developed as under the permitted development, but this would be oppressive. I only ask that you exercise your sound judgment as you did previously and refuse this application on several planning grounds. Thank you also to the committee members who came to visit the site. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neild. Um, Councillor Welton, uh, you will have five minutes for your contribution. And uh, as I've said previously, if, if you advance slightly, I'll just ask that you wrap up your remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Can you hear me OK? Yep, yep. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm very happy to be following in my predecessor, Michael Young's footsteps in opposing a two story development on this site on behalf of the residents of Springfield Road and Garden Lane. It's disappointing that we're here again when a bungalow is so obviously the perfect fit for this plot and the owner already has planning permission for an extension to the current property. A one story development on this site would have got permission a long time ago. Instead, the owner has allowed the existing building to deteriorate while chasing permission for a two story development that is unsuitable for this site. A quick look at right move will show you that there are multiple three bed and bedroom houses on the market close to the centre of Altrincham and more being built. But there is currently only one bungalow for sale and none in the town centre. Stair free houses within easy walking distance of the town centre are very rare and this application seeks to re remove one which could, ideally, which could ideally suit residents with mobility issues. For this reason I'll argue that this application will negatively impact the housing stock in Altrincham whilst causing undue harm to the lives of those living in the neighbourhood, neighbouring properties on Springfield and Garden Lane due to issues of overmassing and highways conflict. Um, yeah, this com committee rejected the previous application for this site on three points, that it failed to preserve the character of the conservation area, that it would be, appear overbearing and busily intrusive and um, would potentially com cause conflict between highways users. Of these three points, only the first has been addressed to any extent by this new proposal, but still manages to contravene conservation area policy on dormer windows. Point two has been made worse during, due to the increased height and width of the roof, and the highways concerns raised in point three have not been remedied at all. With regards to the conservation area, section 35 of the planning officer's report points out that buildings with dormer windows are not normally acceptable in the conservation area but then fails to weigh the proposed dormer window in its consideration of the replacement dwelling. Given the dormer window is vital to this project, thanks to the large height and size of the roof, it can be said that the whole basis of this two-story project rests on a contravention of conservation policy 65. If from the outset, the architect had made the choice to abide by the rules pertaining to the conservation area, the design would not have ended up looking like this. To grant planning permission would be to reward the architect for flouting the rules. With regards to massing, the design and access statement claims that this development retains to quote, a similar relationship to the existing house. Like some of you, I've stood in the garden of three Springfield Road and found that this statement simply does not stack up, unlike the five meter high roof that will loom over three Springfield and its neighbors. The roof will cut off a huge amount of natural light from their south facing gardens and is therefore contrary to policy L7 of the Trafford Core strategy. The fact that the roof is pitched will not compensate given its height and width and the angle to the properties on Springfield Road. This is clearly demonstrated in the architectural diagram of relative heights provided in the objection by five Springfield Road. Residents on Springfield also have legitimate privacy concerns with the facing windows on the east end elevation. The difference is 21.4 metres to five Springfield and 18.4 metres to three Springfield. These distances are less than 20, the 27 metres recommended in the SPG1 guidelines. The design will also seriously impact on the property at 8 Garden Lane. During my visit there, the sun was directly above the office blocks on Victoria Street, but would have been blocked by the proposed roof at Goldmark, cutting off natural light to number eight's garden and rear windows. As this is a demolition and rebuild, local residents are within their rights to expect the highways, uh, the highways issues with the existing site are addressed. Instead, this proposal simply replicates the issues that are already there. Access to the parking space cuts directly across the gates to 8 and 10 Garden Lane. 
as demonstrated to me by a resident, a, ve a vehicle reversing out of these neighbouring properties would be unsighted to a vehicle exiting Gulmarg with a substantial risk of collision. The LHA collision data for the last five years mentioned in the officer's report cannot be used as evidence of an absence of risk because the existing property has lain vacant for that whole period. The second LHA report issued only today looks at 10 years of statistics. However, the houses at 8 and 10 Garden Lane were only built in 2015, since when Gulmarg has been unoccupied. To put it simply, the potential for conflict between vehicles leaving these properties has yet to be tested, and the committee must make up its mind, own mind about whether this experiment is worth the risk. In the written objections to this proposal, there are further issues raised with boundaries, landscaping and bat habitat. However, in conclusion, I will return to the issue of overmassing, which I believe uh, causes the most significant harm with regards to this proposal. This application is significantly worse for the residents of Springfield Road than even the previously re rejected proposal. On this basis, I hope the committee will follow the lead of its predecessor in 2018 and reject this scheme. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Welton. Um, there is a speaker um, in favour of the application. I believe that a written statement has been submitted to be read out. Uh, I'm, I'm not entirely... Is it Ms Lowe's? Are you, uh, yes, uh, thank you, Ms Lowe's. Yeah, I'll read that out now. Thank you. Um, statement regarding the application for planning permission to demolish and replace Gullmark Garden Lane with a new family home. Dear councillors, neighbours and planning team members, I'm the applicant and I submit the following background to this application. My parents have lived on Garden Lane since 2000 and prior to that on Barrington Road since 1977. I grew up in Altrincham, attended Altrincham, Altrincham Grammar. Altrincham has been good to us and we hold it very dear. In 2015, our neighbour, the then owner of Gullmark, moved into a nursing home and we hoped to move and hoped to move out of the property, but given the property's rundown nature, it was difficult to find a buyer. My father, a, a good friend of our neighbour, asked me to buy Goldmark for two reasons, to help our neighbour and also so I could live nearby as my father was getting old. For these reasons, I, I purchased Goldmark, even though the property had seen better days. After acquiring the property, it became evident that it was not well designed or in good shape. After consulting some professionals, we decided to build a new home, which would make it more desirable living space and a positive contributor to the neighborhood. Since 2018, the current architect and I have been working hard on the design of the house, making two pre-applications prior to this current application. We have reworked the design a number of times and worked closely with the local planning team and conservation officer. We aimed for a top-notch design, which respected the conservation area. We also sought to reduce the impact of the house by pulling the design away from the eastern boundary, further than the required minimum distance, uh, distance from the houses on Springfield Road. We have also dropped the fourth bedroom and made the height of the design less than the two houses next door, 8 and 10 Garden Lane. On the suggestion of the local planning team, we have also dropped the garage. We have actively sought to make the design acceptable. Having a family home next to my father's home is the background. Gullmarg is a poorly designed bungalow with only one and a half bedrooms and cannot serve as a home to any family. But on top of that, it is also a desire to address the current poor use of the site. I hope you can consider favor favourably this application to allow the, the site to be replaced by a well-designed family home so it can be a more positive contributor to our wonderful town. Thank you for listening and letting me share this background. Paul Lee. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lowe's. A um, number of members have indicated that they'd like to speak, but I think Ms. Coley, you've asked if you could just provide some clarification in response to the, some of the contributions we've received so far. Yes, thank, thank you, Chairman. Just, just some, uh, just some clarifications. The, the gardens on Springfield Road were described as being south-facing. They're not. They've faced almost due west, um, which is obviously important in terms of the sun path uh, and the consideration of this. Um, it was also mentioned that the inspectorate um, uh, also supported the previous refusal. There was no appeal, so uh, that that also that, that also wasn't the, wasn't the case. That the response was not an appeal, but to bring back a revised application. And also, um, the application for extensions was um, was a permitted development application. It's been um, and understandably so described as as permitted development planning permission it was a certificate of lawfulness for to um determine that the applications could sorry the extensions could be erected under permitted development so just to, just to clarify that thank you thank you Ms. colleague and um, councillor jerome thank you chair i did 
we have a, a very quick question just to ask. Um, in, in the Office's report, um, point 67, in the last couple of sentences, it says it is therefore considered that due to the level differences in short distance to the shared boundary, that additional screening is necessary along the eastern boundary. It's considered that a suitably worded condition requiring such treatment would mitigate any potential for overlooking or loss of privacy uh, to the occupiers of Springfield Road. I just wondered if that is that condition enforceable if they would take the screening away after a number of years? Um, apologies, I was on mute. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, if you're happy for me to answer that now. Yes, it would be enforceable. Um, just trying to turn up the, the condition in, in question. Um, Yes, it, the, it, the condition in question is condition number eight. And the final sentence of that um, condition is the structure shall thereafter be retained. Therefore, they would need to, to, to stay there. And that's something that the council could enforce, is it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, Chair, I'll, I'll just go to my uh, res response as well, if that's okay. Yes, I, I, I do just, in, to complement your point, Councillor Jerome, I do wonder how the condition would be enforced. I mean, it, what what mechanism would that be enforced through? Because is the ultimate risk the planning permission be withdrawn? Or, uh, could, could you just elaborate on the enforcement process, I suppose, is what I'm asking. Sorry, Ms. So, certainly. So um, uh, assuming that the, the, the development is, is um, is is granted on the plans and is and is built in accordance with the approved plan so that that background obviously if it wasn't it would be a slightly different process uh, somebody moves into the property um, and then proceeds to take to take that uh, screening away or lower the height of that screening um we we would i, I, I mean I'd be, I'd be quite open that we would be reliant on a complaint to to take action um uh, and uh, but at that point we would um, we would either be able to serve a breach of condition notice because uh, because there would be a breach or just a straight enforcement notice um, because it would no longer be built in in accordance with the approved plans. We would need to consider harm and ex and and expediency. So if they'd knocked ten centimeters off it and and you know and a reasonable person standing in the garden couldn't see anything. You know, then we we uh, unlikely we would take action. So so we would still have to assess the merits. Of course, we do in every enforcement case. Um, but but we would there is a mechanism uh, and a relatively straightforward mechanism in which to enforce that condition. I suppose, uh, and Councillor Jerome, you're indulging me now and in interrupting you. I'm sorry. I suppose what I'm asking is, you know, what's the end tool that the council has once you've served the notice. Where, where do we go then if the notice isn't adhered to and um, resident says, well, I'm just going to ignore it. We're not putting the screening back. Uh, well, uh, breach of an enforcement notice is a criminal offence. That's at the point in which planning breaches move from being civil to criminal. Um, so ultimately, we, we, would be, uh, we, would be able to we would be able to prosecute whether, uh, again, there's a right of appeal against an enforcement notice. It's not. I, I don't think you would you would go directly from uh, breach to prosecution, but again, that that method of of dealing with with this is is there. Right. So so it becomes a matter for the courts to resolve. Yes. Yes. It it, 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 it would be. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. And sorry, Councillor Jerome, I interrupted you there. That's okay. It's a good questioning because I'm I'm sure this really happens. That it gets to that stage, but uh, um, this application I, th I thought was tricky to begin with, but I don't think it is. Um, the, the application does have some good aspects about it. I, I believe the materials and the design of the building are in keeping with the newly built houses at the end of Garden Lane. And it, it would improve upon the current building, which requires updating, tidying, and detracts from the current street scene. Um, however, uh, residents have put some serious objections to this application, which I believe the officer's report doesn't mitigate. The, the, the new ridge height and the increase from the one storey to two does cause serious problems with overmassing, overbearing and overdevelopment of the plot. The new height will cut off sunlight to Springfield Road Gardens in the early afternoon on summer and autumn days. And I think Miss Coley makes that point clearer when she talks about the garden being um, west facing. 
because as the sun travels over, it will be blocked out as it as it comes to early afternoon. Um, and the pre previous application was refused in 2018. And it's very, very clear that it, the virtue of its sighting, scale, design and external experience. And it goes on to say by virtue of its sighting, height and massing in conjunction, in conjunction with the elevated position of the site would appear overbearing and visually intrusive and would unduly overshadow these properties to the detriment of residential amenity. Nothing has really changed. And we were talking about a flat roof application which was uh, around about 1.5 meters lower than the current application. Um, so on the highway issues, I also tend to agree with uh, Councillor Welton, and I don't think it's fully been tested. Um, and I think the residents have got some really compelling and well-informed arguments here. Um, so overall, I will be rejecting this application and I will be going against officers' recommendation. I'm happy to propose that. And I urge um, fellow councillors on the committee to follow the same suit and uh, and look at that overmassing, overbearing, and loss of residential amenity as reasons for rejecting um, officers' recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. And um, Councillor Cordy, then. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not going to support uh, Councillor Jerome in his uh, refusal. Um, I have a lot of sympathy with the. I have been to the. I, I did visit the back garden of um, the Springfield Park. Um, I have a lot of sympathy, but it's mainly sympathy with the topography of that. It's on a hill. Um, I can't make um, allowances for the hill. Every house that's above is going to be higher than the the the, the house below. It's it's it's. it's, it's it's a physical absurdity to think that it wouldn't. Um, the, how, the plot is a really small plot. Um, it, this is a really good design. And to be honest, planning officers deserve congratulations in working with the applicant to come up with this um, application. It's as, it's as about as... Um, it's going to have less effect than um, many other applications would have done on that plot. plot. In terms of conservation, it's an ideal uh, little, little um, house that's going to be put there. And I really think it's in keeping. It's a lot better that we've done a lot of damage to that area in terms of conservation, in terms of some of the uh, office blocks that are on the main road there. And it, this little neighbourhood, it, it's going to be high, higher than normal density. It's a town centre. And I have a lot of sympathy with that. I know it's taking light away, but that's the nature of a hill, to be honest. And I really struggle to see how we can refuse this applicant because we can't make it better uh, than, than what's provided. And I think the protection of the screening and things like that we've looked at, I, I, I do propose we accept it. I realize that there's going to be a split vote. It may only be me on the one side, but um, I, I support the officer's recommendation on this one. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Bigby. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I've, I'm going to find it extremely difficult to add to what Dr Neil and Councillor Welton have said. Um, they spoke really eloquently. When I first read this officer's report, um, I thought I've got to visit this site. There was something which made me, made me wish to make every effort in the present circumstances, and I did. And when I visited the site, um, I was right. You know, I couldn't possibly support this recommendation. I appreciate that the separation distances have been quoted, but separation distances apply to properties on the flat, surely, not raised up on a hill. Um, I think the, the planning committee were right last time. I think they're perfectly right this time, if we re refuse it. Um, yes, I think if we, to ask this proposed development, will certainly compromise the amenity that the residents of Three Springfield Road particularly currently enjoy and which should be able to continue to enjoy. Um, I think it would be unacceptable to deprive them of that amenity. 
Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Morgan. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've really struggled with this one. Well, I'm sure other committee members can feel the same, that um, you read some applications and you can make your decision quite quickly from just reading the papers. And I, I visited um, this property, uh, the neighbours, um, as well as outside on Garden Lane um, this morning. And I'm really glad I did, um, as it's come to committee. Um, I have thought about it. Um, I think it's tough. Garden Lane is a really tough site. And I don't, it's difficult to put houses in there. Um, I, I, I think the planning team have done a really good job. Um, and this is not a, um, um, it's a difficult place to, to put houses. Um, it's it's an odd site. I have to be honest, I've lived in Altricum six years and I didn't even know this, I didn't even know the road. Um, and, Councillor Cording mentioned topography, and you know it is a factor. This the, the garden is higher; it goes higher than the, the house. But it, this house, that house, was built way before I think anyone on this committee was uh, was alive. You know, it's um, that is just a factor of it, um, and I don't think we can just ignore that and just say, "Well, it's tough." Um, I think that probably there is a little bit of fear on some of this development, which is probably not quite as founded, um, but. I, I've been looking at this and we're looking at Google Maps actually just now. And um, I know it was mentioned it's not a south facing garden. No, that's true. It's more west facing than south, but it is actually it's southwest ish to, to an extent. And I've got a north, I've got a west facing garden, which slightly veers to the north. And I know how much in the summer, particularly, I really value those summer nights when it, when it's rare in Manchester you get them, but that you actually see the um, see the sun come down um, to the extent that I've Tree, my, my trees were um, cut, um, not cut down entirely, but I cut some branches off to get better light um, only a few weeks ago. And I honestly, I just can't see myself supporting it. it I think it's a really good design. Um, I, I, I agree it's a struggle to see what else you would build on there, but I don't think this is fair on the neighbours, particularly on number three. Um, so I will be um, very reluctantly, but I'll be a um, voting against officer recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Uh, Councillor Minnis, uh, and I would just point out to members that we are approaching time shortly. Um, thank you, Chair. I won't, I won't be long. Um, I, 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 I actually um, agree with uh, council accordingly that it is an awkward plot and it's on a hill but then you have to work with the plot you have so I'm afraid that um, putting a two-story uh, house on a plot that's not really suitable given the neighbours um, is not appropriate so um, I will be voting against officer recommendation because I don't think it's fair on the neighbours I'm afraid and you have to work with what plot you have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Minnis. No other members have indicated in the chat, I don't think, that they wish to speak. Um, as it stands, I, I have Councillor Jerome moving a proposal to vote against officer recommendation and Councillor Cordingly moving a proposal to vote in line with officer recommendation. Um, I haven't recorded anybody seconding either proposal, though. Or second against, Chairman, Councillor Ridley. Right. In a second for do we have to, do I have to second for what my well, you proposal? Have, you don't have to, Councillor. I can only No, I know I don't have to, but do we need a seconder? Sorry. If we do, we, I second it. Right. Um okay. So Councillor Rigby moved to second against. Councillor I can only you've moved to second in favour. Councillor Hartley, you've indicated in the chat that you'd like to speak. And... Yeah, sorry, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be brief, Chair. I, I, I think, I think it is a really um, difficult application. I agree with what a lot of what Councillor accordingly said. So I think, I think the key issue is, um, well, Ms. Curley's just, just stolen my thunder. Really, is, is what I'm struggling with is, is the planning grounds to reject the officer recommendation. So I think the parking and the highway safety. I think. I think the as is situation, you could have that issue. So if somebody were to bring the house back into use and uh, and park the car on the site, you would still potentially have that same issue of, of vehicles sort of entering and exiting the property. So 
Uh, I'm not sure that's a planning reason to refuse this application. Uh, the separation distances and, and the overlooking, if, if the screening is, is put in place and that is adhered to, um, which is in the conditions, and there's also a condition about the roof lights on the eastern elevation being obscured, glazed, then th those measures would prevent um, prevent the overlooking, which I know the um, the speaker was was very concerned about. So the the, the sole issue, which which I can I can understand why it is concerning, is is the height of the building and the height of the of the of the ridge height in particular. It does sort of double the you know the roof height that you can that you can see from the gardens on Springfield Road. Um, so I suppose I'd echo what Miss Curley said. You know we'd need reasons to refuse, and I'm not sure. I think that's the only basis. That, that still has some merit in planning terms, but I'm not sure that is enough grounds to refuse. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. In terms of voting, can I just be reminded the motion we take first? It, it, it's the opposite motion, Chairman, so the motion to refuse, which is why we need the reasons. Okay. Um, as I understand it from what members have said, they're concerned about the height of the building contained within the application and the impact that that would have on residential amenity of neighbouring properties um, and also in terms of just the development being overbearing. Did, I think, you, you, you're capable of articulating this better than I am, Ms. Cohen. <laughs> no, no, no I've, I've, I've heard the same, um, Chairman. Um, and yes, we, we could turn that into a, into a reason for, for, for refusal. Um, I have heard concerns about highway safety. I would very much advise against that as a reason for refusal on the basis that there is a dwelling on the site now. So there is a fallback position. Um, but again, I've only heard that from one or two members. Um, so, um, but, so I think we just need, we just need um, some indication that, it, that, that the vote would be on that one reason for refusal, the, over, the overbearing. Oh, okay. I'm in agreement with what you've said about the use along the basis of highways. Um, I've just given members the opportunity to say they don't agree or they want additional reasons for refusal. I'm not attempting any um, desire for reasons for refusal. So I suggest that we move to the vote on the motion to refuse contrary to officer recommendation. Um, on the basis of the reasons that were just discussed with Ms. Coley. Uh, I'll move through the members now. Councillor Rigby. Refused, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Jerome. Councillor Jerome, are you, can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, you have a refuse also, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hartley. I'd, I'd vote to refuse as well, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Minnis. I'll be voting to refuse the application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Proctor. Yeah, refuse as well. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cordingly. Voting against refusal, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Carey. Refusal, please, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Akinola. Voting against refusal. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Morgan. Vote for refusal. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Acton. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, against refusal, so I support the officer's recommendations. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dr. Barkley. Voting for refusal of the application. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I shall also vote for refusal. I, I make that eight votes in line with what was proposed, which is to vote against officer recommendation and three votes um, to the contrary. Um, I make it nine, three, Chairman, because there mm -hmm. are um, 12. Yeah, I make it nine, I, I can't count. <laughs> Sorry, thank you, Ms. Coley. Um, I think we're probably at time for the meeting now. So can we just remind members present of the date for the deferred meeting, the, the, the outstanding application, sorry. 
Uh, yes, we'll, we will reconvene on Tuesday um, coming, which I think is the 26th. Um, uh, time to be agreed. Perhaps if you close the meeting, uh, Chairman, we can agree that that time between us.